Ben and Woods, 97.3 The Fan. Let's get our heads right on a, uh, should be a nice Monday morning here on the program. Good to be with you after a uh, long weekend. Not long weekend, but like arduous weekend, I guess you could say. <laughs> right? Not like a long weekend. We didn't get an extra day or anything. No, not the traditional long <sighs> weekend. Like it was a <sighs> holiday Monday or Friday or something. It's just long. The... Arduous maybe for some people. I don't know that everyone considered it arduous i had a fairly relaxing nice week yeah i should have just said for me it was, <laughs> yeah, ar- a great week. It was arduous. good good for you guys good for you guys i'm very happy for you uh it's good to be in here with you guys we can get to uh all of the happenings uh from the weekend and beyond and i will say it was nice to bookend the weekend with a couple of pod race wins that's uh not something we've been used to here for a while usually we win a couple games and then drop the one on sunday and everyone's in a bad mood, and now it's uh, it's kind of flipped the script a little bit. So thanks for uh, listening on the radio. Thanks for being in our YouTube chat. You can watch us every day on YouTube and uh, comment on our, our appearances and uh, you know facial hair, hats, weight, uh, whatever, whatever. It usually happens uh, every day. You can comment in the chat, and we read a lot of comments from the chat as well. Um, it's a good good way to keep involved with the show. Uh, I'm Woodsy. That's Paul Rindle. He's the executive producer and the imaging director for the radio station. Good morning, Paulie. Good morning. Benjamin Higgins, your friendly neighborhood sports anchor. Uh, to my left, good morning, Benjamin. Good morning. Good morning. I know that you had a... Uh, well, I think you're mostly coming from your Easter morning. This is kind of is where your fatigue is resting. Well, the uh, the my son is on... One of my children is on spring break, too, so... And continues to be on spring break. It's another week of spring break. It's the it's the breakiest spring break that you've ever had. So uh, it just kind of throws a little monkey wrench into the into the system and the vibes. You got to keep him uh, entertained, and you got to make sure that he's not you know just laying around on iPad all day and, and stuff like that. So there's just you're just planning. I've missed. I'm also beating myself up. I've missed. Uh, I missed a therapy appointment on Saturday that I had scheduled. I just missed it. And she called me at one fifty. I was supposed to be there at one thirty. Are you okay? Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, you have an appointment. And I'm like, bro, you're a grown man. And I just biffed it. That's a phone call you don't want to miss. Like, like you, that you get panicked when you're like, why the hell is my therapist calling me right, right. now? Yeah, and I just biffed it. Hey, and are you okay? <laughs> like, well, who told you something? What's going on? I I booked a podcast. Who told you I wasn't okay? I booked a podcast for next week. I booked it on a day where I had al- I already have a doctor's appointment. That I did not write in my calendar. Also booked a doctor's appointment the same day as the round table. So I had to call Adam on Saturday and go, hey, listen. And I send him, like, the screenshot. I go, when I booked this appointment, I got stitches in my back. I got to get them taken out. I thought I booked it for Tuesday. I get the confirm from them. It's for Thursday. I had it in my calendar. It's Tuesday. I'm losing my mind. I cannot find it. I'm about to start writing stuff on my arm. Like, I've, I've lost it. I can't. You need a personal assistant. <laughs> Scheduler. Someone who just kind of follows you around all day to make sure you're on task and uh, not forgetting any critical appointments. I just I feel I feel like I'm just spiraling right now as far as as keeping my my life together. It's just not going well. You know I'm I'm double booking. I'm triple booking uh, appointments. All these things are happening, and I'm like, oh crap! I got to. So I called Adam and I said, hey, I'm not kidding you when I tell you this. I did not mean to book it during the roundtable. I know that I've given you grief about the roundtable. You're not going to believe me. But I sent him the screenshot. I swear I thought I booked it for Tuesday. It's booked for Thursday, 1045. Okay? I said I can't do both. He's like, I get it. I get it. So right when we're getting off the phone, he goes, is I'll there... take your stitches out. We'll is... just do it during the round table. <laughs> he, he, How at, hard can it be? At the end, he goes. I mean, putting him in, I obviously uh-huh. would be difficult. Like, but I taking, like taking them out, stitches. I, like I mean, taking come stitches. On. Get some tweezers, some scissors. It can't, it can't be that hard, right? So at the very end, he goes, "Is there any way you can change your doctor's appointment?" I said, I, "There's not. There's not. I can't. And don't make me. You know what I mean? Like I will say, it is very hard to change <sighs> appointments. Like my dentist, if I don't make it, you're done. Like 38 months in advance." I've already scheduled out my next seven dentist appointments because they book up so quickly. So you can't really change medical appointments without major inconvenience. You'll have stitches in your back for another four months if you don't get them out on Thursday. I just feel like a, I feel like a loser. <laughs> That's what I feel. I really have been beating myself up about like managing your calendar should be like one of the easiest things that you do. And you, we all have these phones and they go everywhere. Let's just put it in. 
I put it in. I'm putting stuff in the wrong dates. I had to bail on a podcast that I had had agreed to do, and uh, I'm just struggling right now. I'm just. I'm just. I don't know what it is. It's just one of those. One of those weird times where a lot's going on, and I, there's a decent chance I, we have a seals game at some point this week. There's a decent chance I show up on the wrong day. Very decent that I show up Saturday ready to rock. Like, All right, let's kick some ass. Like, bro, we played last night. Where were you? <laughs> like, this, like, like it's a better than fifty percent chance that I or, that I just don't show up. So, I'm about to start doing like tying little strings around my fingers and stuff so that I remember. Hannah, of course who keeps the most diligent schedule of all time, she looks at me like I'm an absolute buffoon. And she's like, well, if you did the app that I sent you that goes to the home. I go, it's, this, it's not for me. That's your schedule. So I'm just having a hard time with that. Plus we had, we had Easter yesterday, which was a, a, a really beautiful day up until it wasn't. We had, <laughs> we had this really incredible uh, brunch, and it was me and my family and my mother-in-law, Susie. Was it a buffet? Did it, they say it was, it was a buffet? Did they you show it up and it, it wasn't It was a buffet. A buffet. Okay, good. It was also brunch. <laughs> it was Easter brunch, but it happened to be a buffet at uh, at the Omni, and it was great. They have a carving guy? They had a carving guy, yes. and he was unbelievable, and I did get the perfect <laughs> thickness in it. Yeah, um, better than a dime. It was, All right. It was more than a dime. It was. <laughs> So Bean I slices are better though. <laughs> I, he, I just he goes. Uh, I got a couple end caps. Do you want those? I go. No, I'd like the fresh one. He tried to pitch me the end caps. Have They're you tried the lasagna? It's my favorite. <laughs> Actually, no, because it's uh, it's 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 nine thirty in the morning. I don't really want lasagna uh, right now, but I did want roast beef. By the way, did you catch a game last night? I did. I did. Actually, I did. I watched the Padres game. It was it was no good. Uh, so I so we go to this dinner or this brunch. It's incredible. The food's spectacular. Everyone is is having a great time. Great convo. Then we go to the Easter egg hunt, which they did in a giant conference room <laughs> with about fifty thousand eggs on the ground. It was. Could they do a nice job hiding <laughs> the eggs away from the children on the flat ground on the convention center carpet? It was like a, <laughs> Ben. I sent you guys a picture. It was like a dump truck came in and we went, beep beep beep. <laughs> <laughs> and there were eggs all over the floor. My kids were like, Ooh. they ran in. There was no, there was no looking for eggs. It was just collecting as many as you could. So we did that. We go back to our table, round two for food and pastries and whatnot. All of a sudden, I'm like, all right, we've been here two hours. Bo's getting antsy. I'm like, let's go outside. So Bo and I go for a walk outside. We're doing, we're doing fake baseball in the in the the grass outside. And all of a sudden, my wife comes out. She's carrying my three year old. Under the arms length, arms at a length, distance, and walking out like a zombie, like the oh, zombie boy. walk. And I go, "What happened?" She goes, "Guess." And I go, "Oh no!" And he just <laughs> all over himself, just <laughs> down the legs, the whole bit. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh my god, we don't have a change of clothes." She goes, "No, we don't have a change of clothes. They're not babies anymore." I'm like, "Well, he just crapped all over himself a little bit." So. At a, had, at a nice brunch. Massive. And we were in the back, so they had to carry him all the way through. People were like, oh, God, what's happening? <laughs> carry him through. Get him out to the car. Get him out to the car. Just trying to eat my potato I salad want, over here. I just wanted these deviled eggs. I didn't see it. And he's, like, he's crying, and she's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. She's oh, four God. mimosas in. It was a train wreck. So we get him to the car, stripped him down fully nude in the parking lot. <laughs> And we're pouring eco water, <laughs> bottled water, all over him. Why eco water? Simply the best. So we had a couple. We have wipes. So we're I'm I'm like this. It was as bad of a blowout as it's ever been. It was all nutty, <laughs> nutty. and so we cleaned him up, had a pair of underwear, put him in it, took him home. Was just like, whew. And luckily, luckily. The Padres had a, a total laugher yesterday. That's what we needed. That's what I needed. I think that's what the fan base needed the most. Get that that laugher in where it was never, never, never in doubt. And uh, but yeah, makes it'll make for a great story at his wedding one day. Hey, remember that time you just unloaded your bowels at that really nice uh, Easter brunch we went to, <laughs> and then your dad embarrassed you about it on the radio the next day. It was. It was. I can't even describe to you how gnarly it was. I, mean, I have a rich, picture, rich but I'm foods, not... candies. Yeah, I can. I can see how perhaps an accident. <laughs> 
waiting to happen there. Yeah, the, uh, Eco Water had given me a couple of cases of water, and we had thrown it in the back of Hannah's truck. So I'm like, "We'll use that." So we only wash our children's feces off with the best water. Eco water. Has Adam uh, contacted you yet to pull that so we can send, send it, it to, to the, the sponsor for a little no. extra mention there? No, but it's not, on not its that way, one. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it's. I don't happening. know that they. You know, I'll just take the initiative. I, I'll just send just it. Send to it. Me. I don't know that Eco Water actually wants that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the message they're trying to send to the listenership. So your boy's in here. I'm struggling a little bit with the the schedule mismanagement, the spring break. The poop and everything else is just really it's it's coming down on me right now. It is just it is just coming down on, on me right now. Yeah, everyone's in the sunshine and I've got that little that little rain cloud just <laughs> following me around. So I gotta get out of that negativity. Now a lot um, of rain clouds this weekend. There has a lot there was a lot of rain clouds this weekend. I'm really surprised. I'm I'll be honest, I'm really surprised they got those games in. I thought they're gonna bang at least one of these, but no problem. Zero. Like, no issues whatsoever. They got it done, so good for them. And I'm thrilled they did because my weekend ended up revolving around watching yeah. said baseball games. I had a quiet weekend at home, got some work done, didn't do a ton, took the uh, the boys and uh, and the younger one's girlfriend out to dinner on Saturday night. You but did? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I got to know her a little bit more. God, I love those. that. I can't wait for that. Oh, I need to, Where'd you go? Where'd you go? What'd you do? I want the whole thing. I let them pick, so we went to Islands, which is always fun. I, I love Islands. Islands is solid. Huge Islands. Fan. Yeah, watch, you know. watch the game at, at Islands right, on hold Saturday on, hold night. On. Saturday night, you, Graham, and his Jack girlfriend. and his girlfriend. Uh, yeah. You, Graham, Jack, and his girlfriend. So Graham's girlfriend, but Jack, Graham, right. and Graham's girlfriend. So yeah. the brother goes with his brother. And, and so Bo and Taylor go with Bo's girlfriend, or Taylor's girlfriend. And you guys are just kicking right. it. Well, Jack and I went a little early. Graham had to pick her up from work. So we got a table before it was crowded. So yeah. we wanted to get somewhere where we could see a TV, watch basketball and Padres at the same time. We shared some fries just like as an appetizer yep. while we waited, which was fun. Uh, you know, bottomless, you know, drinks and such at Islands. Yeah. And then they got there and we ordered and had a good dinner. Learned a little bit about her, you know, and had a nice meal. And everyone was uh, everyone was happy on a Saturday night except for the Padres not winning that game. As a dad, I don't picture you as the kind that's going to embarrass him. Like intentionally. Intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, you might embarrass him, but you're not doing the bit that I'm going to do. Be like, hey, remember that time you crapped your pants and rubbed it all over your face? Remember that? Correct. I'm going to be that guy. We're I, ball busters in my house. I was pretty well behaved and, uh, you know, nothing too embarrassing for the children. That's good. Yeah. And then did you make everyone split the check? No. Okay. You bought the you check. Did, you did pick paid for everybody. <laughs> did the dad thing. Well, Rachel, we have a rule around here. The uh, <laughs> newcomer, rookies have to pay. <laughs> She's like, um, uh, you, owe, uh, you owe $17.49. That is amazing. I'm so jealous. I love that. I love that. I, I, think was, I didn't pry too much. I asked just enough questions to seem interested, but I didn't want to be like, like, like over it. I asked her about her like job and where she's working okay. and stuff like that. Not nothing too personal. Okay, that's good. We talked like movies, things she that she movies. enjoys. Okay. Yeah. So. Did you tell her all the things that you like? I no. like Steve uh, Kerr. That takes too long. That's I like yeah. Steve Kerr. <laughs> I like the way that I've set up my life. I like, like more of a firm filling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I do like a small derriere, by the way. No, no, that would, have, that would have taken the conversation in inappropriate direction. Now, does she know who you are? Like what you do? I have no idea. You don't know. I don't know. Riveting. Is she a tier one? I don't think so. Okay. I'm so fascinated with that dynamic and insanely jealous. I mean, I, I assume I Graham has mentioned oh, I'm sure. what I do at some point, but it didn't really come up I'm sure. for the most part. That's really cool. <laughs> Keep it in the chat. It's, You've probably seen me on TV. Yeah. <laughs> so it's different, though, when you have a son and he has a girlfriend as opposed to, I think, when you have a daughter and she has a boyfriend. Oh, I think if you had a daughter and she had a boyfriend, you'd be much more uh, grilling. Meet the him. parents aggressively grilling just to make sure that yeah. this guy's not a complete creep, First et cetera, question. et cetera. So what's your problem? <laughs> so what's your problem? What do I need to be looking out for? It's, it would um, be you'd be on the defensive. It's it's amazing when you have the son, it's like it's her her parents can worry about. Yeah, 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 going yeah, on yeah, here. yeah. I don't really have to worry too much. Hey, so what are you looking at, pal? <laughs> Hey, do you even if I if I told you to pay for this dinner, do you even have the money, you deadbeat piece of s? That would be me if, if it was my daughter. 
the good Lord above, he knows. He knows. I cannot give this guy a daughter. I'm not. I wouldn't be good. Then there's other guys, you guys that probably aren't, you know, best suited for sons. He he makes sure that they go to the right places most of the time. I feel. Um, but that's a cool. That's a really cool night. I'm glad you did that, Benjamin. All right, uh, let's get going here because we got a lot to get to from the weekend, including a trio of Padres games, as Wood said, ending with the best one. A little change from last year. So we'll talk Padres baseball and more. Set the menu when we come back for a Monday. Should be a very good week. Looking forward to it. Get another game tonight. We got tickets to give away. We'll tell you all about that coming up with Ben and Woods getting started here on a Monday post Easter, post brunch for Woods. Sounded like it was good until it wasn't it good. It was good until it wasn't. Uh, let's check traffic and then we'll be right back at San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Got a uh, few complaints about the Odyssey app this morning. It is not an April Fool's prank. In fact, we are not allowed to pull April Fool's pranks. That's by the definition of the law from the Federal Communications Commission. No April Fool's pranks this morning uh, from from your old pals Ben and Woods. We never would anyway. We could prank each other. We could. You yeah. just can't prank the audience with like a major hoax. Here, like shake war, my hand real quick. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I war, can do that. War of the Worlds. Like we can't make people think that aliens are invading San Diego, panic people, <laughs> cause riots. That's that I think is what the Federal Communications Commission is concerned about. Yeah. So we've uh, I texted the engineers. He submitted a ticket to whoever is taking tickets. Uh, they're going to try to fix that for you. But again, you can watch us on YouTube. Uh, you can, what are the other ways they can do it? You can Twitch. Twitch. You can do that if you wanted to. You can listen on your old Facebook, transistor radio, Twitter, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah. X. Whatever. X. <laughs> so there's plenty of ways to get us in you uh, if you want, if you're so inclined. And where of there's course, anywhere you get your podcasts after the hour. After the hour. Uh, where there's a will, there's a way. But if you did want to listen live, your radio or YouTube may be your best bet. All right. Well, uh, wherever you consume us, we get a good show coming up for you, starting with our Padres wrap-up. We'll get to yesterday's 12-run explosion in the first three innings and win over the San Francisco Giants. Get all of Jesse and Tony's calls from yesterday's 13-4 to win over the Giants and discuss that game, and then we'll move into uh, the other two games, Friday and Saturday night's losses to the San Francisco Giants. Uh, Padres 3-3 three and three Woods through six games yeah. to start the season. That's about right. Against the two teams that spent the most in the offseason, the Dodgers and the Giants, the two teams that went out and spent the most on their rosters. Yep. Not gonna I'm not gonna pitch a fit about being three and three. They could be better, probably should be better, but three and three is um they didn't it's fine. They didn't wreck their season. No. They didn't uh, you know, separate themselves from the pack either. Uh, we'll talk about some of the other baseball teams and, and weekend that was in Major League Baseball as well. Did you find yourself, either of you guys, watching a ton of baseball? Because I, once it got back, like Thursday night. A or, lot. I, a lot. Like, I, I couldn't get enough. I watched a ton, and I got so much. I got yelled at for from Dodger fans for commenting on the Dodger game, but it was the only game on. Like, that's that at that point. Last night. Last night, and then the night before. I watched the end of the Dodger game the night before, but it was it was the only game. As soon on. as the game came on Saturday, Jack and I had one on the television yeah. as I was just doing uh, doing chores around the house. Feels and so then, good to have it back on. We were watching Bo and I were watching Brewers Mets, which turned out to be a phenomenal phenomenal series. I had some dual screen action going yeah, this weekend because the basketball games were phenomenal this weekend God, in I mean, in college basketball. I didn't watch it. I'm not surprised. I didn't watch it. Once he asked, I mean, there were no buzzer beaters or anything really, but it was solid oh, there were, basketball. I mean, yeah. the Purdue Tennessee game was that the was best really game of the game. entire tournament. Yeah, it was a good <laughs> game. I feel like I missed. I feel like I missed a good one there. We will talk <laughs> a little. Well, we'll get you caught up because I, I do want to talk a little college basketball as well. We'll get you caught up on not only what's going on in the NCAA men's tournament, but and you know we don't talk a ton of women's basketball. Today might be the most anticipated day. Maybe in women's basketball history. It's You've a, got two games in the Elite Eight huge. featuring the four biggest stars probably <laughs> of women's basketball today. All taking the court on the same night. And people are predicting that the games, which I believe are on ESPN at 4 and 6 o'clock, could be the most watched women's basketball games in the history of television. Caitlin tonight. Clark v. Caitlin Angel Clark v. Reese Angel tonight. Reese. Oh my and then, God! Uh, Come Juju on. Watkins of USC against yep. Paige Beckers of UConn in the other game. And there's a lot of anticipation for these two Elite Eight games with only a couple of spots left in the Final Four. So women's basketball getting their due today and a little extra attention. Uh, you know, it's all the culmination of this entire season of Caitlin Clark and, that game, and the four, excitement. Four o'clock tip oh, off huge. works really well for a uh, six forty Padres game. It does. Tonight. So that's going to be huge tonight. So we'll talk a little college basketball. Seven o'clock hour. Our regular segments of Take on Woods and Don't Do This. Just a little preview. What is going on at Petco Park, people? We have to discuss some fan behavior in the stands here? at Petco Park today on Don't Do This. What's happening? Not sure. Just a long off season, and people were a little. Uh, but it's pretty off putting. A little say. wild. I mean, let's figure it out, guys. Let's be better. You know, let's we, be better. we may need to establish some rules here. Well, again, I, mean, I guess they already have rules. They have rules there, <clears throat> but. Um, I think it's a pretty universal rule. Yeah, don't act a fool. 
<clears throat> don't fight. don't get in a fight at our beloved Petco Park, man. Three, there's, we've had four Look, games. Padres on Padres crime, too. It, it was. It's four games in a row, and I have seen documented fights in three of four. Now, I didn't see any yesterday. Sundays are usually a pretty chill day out at the ballpark. You know, game earlier, the, game, earlier game. game yeah. You don't have uh, the chance to get really lubed up. But Friday nights always make me nervous. And uh, Saturday night, there was a huge fight in Gallagher Square on Thursday night. So, you know, Dodger fans will call us all the time, Dodger Stadium South. Let's not take it literally and really turn it into Dodger Stadium South, right? We don't want that. Second half of the program, we'll have our Monday conversation uh, weekly with in-season Sammy, Sammy Levitt, our Padres uh, pre- and post-game show host at 8.35 to talk about the games that uh, he was all at all over the weekend against the San Francisco Giants. we got a Rindle report and... We got some extra giveaways today as well. We'll be giving away tickets to the Padres Cardinals game tomorrow. That's the big 97 3 The Fan Poncho Giveaway, City Connect Poncho Giveaway game featuring the three of us out there throwing the ceremonial first pitch. Did you bring your glove today so we could practice yeah. throwing in the parking lot for a minute or I got, two? I got gloves in my car. I got multiple gloves in my car. Okay. I got balls. I got everything. everything could use we got to figure that out. Use a little bit of practice and training before we get out there. In front of the mound at Petco Park, in front of what is going to be 40,000 plus fans. Ben's of course. worried about the throw. I'm wondering, like, how are we walking out? Do you wave? What are we doing? Oh, are we t- I didn't do you tip even the think... cap? Like, what's protocol? I've been so worried here? about the throw. I haven't, th- I haven't thought about everything else that goes with it. Don't wear flip flops. Don't trip yeah, on don't, yourself don't tomorrow. I'm going to wear flip flops. I'm doing television. You wear flip flops every. I'm wearing right now. Flip flops, but I'm not throwing out a first pitch right now, and I'm <laughs> exactly. not going to be on television like I will be tomorrow night. Just telling you, don't wear them. Do you guys want to join me on Channel 10 on a live shot for a minute? Tomorrow? Yeah. Are you doing a live shot at the game? Yeah, right. Right, yeah. Before we go, right before we go out and throw the first pitch. Like where? Like right on the right on the field. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, hell, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> 620, like right before. I don't oh, know. What's, like right before. what's the timing of our first pitch? It's usually like, <laughs> like six, 625. Six, seven or eight <laughs> minutes before the, the game starts at 640, right? So, yeah, we'll be TV right to first pitch tomorrow. Wow. Oh my god! Getting nervous. So you're gonna have nervous. the big. You're gonna have the camera guy with the big light mm-hmm. and everything, and people are like, "Who is this?" <laughs> and then walk right over onto the onto the field and <laughs> toss out a first pitch. It's quite the night. It's quite the night oh, tomorrow. Man. My heart is racing. I can hear it. I can hear it right now. Now we, I've, I've done this before, but I was just some slap D from ninety four nine. You know, now we're on the, the Padres flagship, Ben and Woods, nice show that we have put together. Question for you, and I know we have to keep moving. When you did it last time, yeah. like what was the crowd? I mean, was it a was it a large attendant game or well, smaller attendance? It was smaller attendance okay. because I mean it was Just, was there let, any reaction? What year was it? Well, Christian Bethencourt caught okay. my so first pitch. If that tells you, yeah, tells, tell you something. So there's like 12,000 people. When they introduced you, was it no, <gasps> it no reaction, <laughs> polite applause? Was it anything? Polite applause. But not like overwhelming no. cheers. No. I have no idea. What What do you think? I mean, there's a lot of tier ones of the game. There's going to be that. tier ones of the game. I hope there's they... going to be asses in the seats, man. These, yeah. It's a big, it's a poncho giveaway night. I think a lot of people are going to be showing up for that. I know. Well, it's definitely going to be a huge crowd. I know that. The question is, are they going to completely ignore us like I do most first pitches? Yeah, same. Let's be honest. I ignore the first pitch when I'm a fan. Please do. Or will there be <laughs> a lot of attention on us knowing what if they mess it up? People like anticipating what's going to happen here. I I need a friendly face. Well, if we didn't my, want anybody to be there for it, we probably shouldn't have been talking about it for well, the last five the, minutes. What, what friendly face is going to catch our first pitch? Crony would be a friendly Crony face for me. Crony is going to be so – he'd be devious too. They're all looking I've been to looking, get us. They're all at, looking to get us somehow. I've been looking at who's caught the last few first pitches, and it's been like Graham Pauly, like Tom okay. Cosgrove, I think, caught okay. one. I'll throw one to either of those guys. Fine. I'm assing my pants. I'm going to be like Taylor on – Easter Browns. Like, I man. doubt it's going to be Manny, Fernando, and, no. you know, Bogart. Musgrove or something. Oh, my God. Joe likes us. He might do it. Joe's got bigger fish to fry at this point. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You will be pitching tomorrow, correct? correct. You garbage. Me? Oh, I think not me. No, I'm not pitching. I'm <laughs> You're just throwing out the pitch. pitch. You're not pitching. You yet. are throwing out the first pitch before you throws out the first pitch. Yeah. All right. Got it. And then uh, we do have some <clears throat> tickets to Eric Clapton coming to Pachanga Arena in October. 
give those away later in the show as well. So big Monday program coming up. We'll start with our Padres wrap-up, discuss yesterday's 13-4 win over the Giants. It is coming up next. We'll be right back with more Ben and Woods on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
All right, this is a timely liner to read because uh, it says, on your way into work, want to keep listening to us even after you park the car with the Odyssey app and odyssey.com. You can just download the app. <laughs> Visit odyssey.com, search 97.3 The Fan, and click on our show. Download the Odyssey app today to get started. So if you tried the Odyssey app this morning and it wasn't working for you, and now you're listening on the radio but would rather go back to the app, we have been told by the engineering staff that it has been repaired and you should be able to listen to Ben and Woods any way you'd like, including on the Odyssey app right now. Someone forgot to uh, flip a switch or something the after the Padres game. Yeah. yeah. So now we are back and running this morning on all outlets we for just, Ben and Woods. We thought it'd be fun to block out anybody living within the San Diego County limits. Yeah, we don't want those guys anyway <laughs> no. listening to us. Stay away. Yeah. Actually, it's supposed to geo-block people outside of San Diego oh, during that, Padres yeah. games. But for some reason, it does sometimes, depending on what cell phone tower you're pinging right. off of. If you're in the North County... It, it oftentimes blocks the Padres games when it shouldn't, and I don't know if there's a fix for that, but I would love the Odyssey staff somewhere to figure that out. Because I don't know you where are the cell phone towers are. I've been in Escondido, and it thinks I'm in Phoenix. Yeah, you're go, supposed what? to be able to listen to games in San Diego on the Odyssey app, but so many times it doesn't think you're in San Diego, and I don't know how <laughs> you can fix that part. If it doesn't think you're in San Diego, we have to block it like legally from Major League Baseball. It's really cool mm. when you DM me about it, too, because I definitely have yeah. so many ideas on how to fix it. But that's uh, <laughs> it's one of those radio things that is uh, above my pay grade. And I have no idea how it works at all. Yeah. So yeah, don't don't send messages to me or Woods about it. We can't. Well, do you're not, not going to answer me. Them. I, I, uh, I, I, you don't answer them. I answer them. Well, I'm like I have no idea. And Sorry. I am passing it along to the people who hopefully can can do something about it. All yeah. right, let's check traffic. Kelly will uh, tell us how the roadways look, and then we will have our Padres wrap up a victorious Padres wrap up for a Monday morning coming up next year on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Davick. Happy to report no incidents or accidents this time around, guys. Our Cordell and Cordell traffic cams are picking up a pretty smooth ride westbound 52 out of Santee at this time. I'm Kelly Danick with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. I love winning, man. I f***ing love winning. You hear what I'm saying? It's like better than losing. Oh, my God. I'm so stiff. <laughs> Miss any of the Padres win yesterday? Ben and Woods didn't. What up, crew? We've got you covered with all of the highlights. I like it when the Padres win. Yeah! 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 It's the Padres wrap-up, presented by Hamul Casino. With thrilling slots and tables and all the best rewards, Hamul Casino has all the fun you're looking for. Hamul Casino, fun above all else. Yeah! Give me a do damage. Do damage! Here's Cronenworth, goes off the glove of the catcher, Bailey. He's got no idea where it is. Bogarts will score as the pitcher, Jeffries, went to pick up the ball near the Padre on deck area. Tatis advances to third, and it's one to nothing on a cross-up, it looked like, between Jeffries and the catcher, Bailey. Here's the 1-1. Machado laces it into right center field. That will find the gap, and Tatis will walk home from third. And he's on his way to second base as Lee picks it up at the base of the wall. An RBI double and a 2-0 Padre lead in the first. Second and third with two outs. Swings at the first pitch. Hits it in the air to deep right. Wade's going back at the Petco porch wall. He looks. Going to go. Three run. Home run. And Luis Camposano adds to the 2-0 lead. The Padres in front. Five zip here in the first. And he rips this one on a line to deep right field. That'll get the job done. One hop up against the fence. Merrill has scored. Bogarts hits third. He's held there. Cronenworth into second with an RBI double and a 6-0 Padre lead. Two on and two out. Here's the pitch to Kim, and he swings. Hits it in the air. Deep down the left field line. Conforto looking. This one going to go. Another three-run homer. Camposano in the first. And now Ha Song Kim, his first of the season, a three-run shot in the second inning, and it is 9-0. Merrill lines it the other way, sharply down the line, a fair ball all the way to the left field corner. Conforto's got to dig it out. Pauly's being waved around third. He's on his way. He's going to score. RBI double Jackson Merrill, and a 10-0 Padre lead in the third. 2-1, Machado stings it to right field. Matos backing up, looking up over his head off the very top of the wall. Rolls back towards the infield. Merrill has scored. Bogart's on his way. Manny into second with a two-run double. How about 12-0 in the third? 
Cairo Estrada gets in, swings at the first pitch, sends it in the air to deep left. Profar is back at the wall, looking, going to go. A two-run home run for Tyro Estrada, his first of the year. 3-2 to Slater, bounce back to Peralta. He misses it. It ends up with Wade at second, steps on the bag. One, on to first in time, a double play, and the game is over. Nicely done by Tyler Wade, getting some action at second base this afternoon. So Peralta gets the final three outs, and the pods run all over the Giants here this afternoon. Final score, 13 to four. Just great at bats. You know, we, we uh, don't want to take for granted bogeys on such a great job from that leadoff spot. And again, sets a tone, has a lot of great at bats today. You know, clearly got production from the whole lineup. Every guy in the lineup at least had one knock. Um, just good at bats throughout. And Not only did everybody in the lineup get at least one knock, everybody in the lineup had at least one knock and one run scored. Yeah. In the first three innings of the game, it's pretty great. Which is an incredible start. Padres score five in the first, four in the second, three in the third, and then uh, called off the dogs and went on to the thirteen four win over the San Francisco Giants yesterday. Great offense, taking advantage of obviously Dalton Jeffries, not not one of the uh, the top starters, making his way back from Tommy John surgery, and uh, Padres did win the game. They had to to get that series split. On a Sunday, Easter Sunday at Petco Park. Baseball's wild, man, because Dalton Jeffries, I was watching his stuff, and I went, oh, stuff looks pretty good. Uh, he got really hurt by a, I mean, a six hopper to the shortstop, booted it. Uh, the ball off of the mask, you know, ended up costing him a run. I mean, this, it, baseball can change. Even it, the two home runs weren't particular. Right. They were both under 100 miles an hour on exit velocity. Campy's was. Just kind of <laughs> dumped his. I mean, I, I think as cheap as you're going to get at Petco Park, but it counts just the same. 100%. I mean, it's, you know, you hate to say a cheap home run because you still got to get it out of the ballpark. It's tough, but uh, you couldn't have hit a shorter home run at Petco Park. And I saw Jay Posner tweet that, and I, I got a little pissy about it. And I went, no, he's absolutely right. I mean, it was, it was great. You got to have those, but I did feel bad for the kid. Um, not too bad, but it was, it was just his defense really let him down early, completely changed the tone. And the Padres took advantage of sloppy defense, which again, you know, people were making the point on Twitter um, when they announced it was going to be Dalton Jeffries. They're like, Oh, we've seen this story way too many times. Kind of an unknown guy, very little, you know, film on him. He's going to come in and carve these guys up. So I love that they came out aggressive against him, uh, made them make plays, which they did not, and they took advantage, and it was never in doubt. It was great. And I think, you know, if there's cause for concern, uh, Michael King, I think, was was cause for concern yesterday. When your team stakes you to a 12 nothing lead and you can't get a de- – you don't earn a decision – that's a tough day. That's a tough day at the yard for you. It was very Blake Snell-esque very by Michael King yesterday. Uh, really, he's got to be kicking himself. When you get a 12 nothing lead, you get Bro, the easiest win in easiest history. Dub you in the just world. have to get through five innings. That and was he was, the, only, the only difference is Snell, it would be you know one nothing, 2 to one or something right, like that. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, there was no uh, I mean, offense. Yeah, he, didn't, he didn't get the offense, but the performance, four innings, only two hits. Yeah. Um, but seven walks <laughs> and six strikeouts. You can't walk seven. You I just mean, can't. Even, even Blake, you know, his his bad games were more like five usually. Seven is with eleven Ks. <laughs> and, and 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 he stranded most of those. Only one walk came around to score on the two run home run by Estrada. So it didn't do a ton of damage. It just it upped the pitch count to the point where early in the season he wasn't able to go back out for the fifth inning and get that what would have been an easy win. Uh Pedro Avila, kind of an unsung star, eight three innings. Gave up just one hit, two runs, got the win in relief, and and saved the Padres bullpen for the most part. Perfect uh, for uh, the series against the Cardinals. Perfect spot, yeah, for Pedro Avila. That's why Pedro Avila is on this team. That's that's that is the exact situation you want to use Pedro Avila in right now. Uh, but yeah, with with King, you know, I was texting with some buddies about it, and it was like, hey man, you're up twelve nothing. Fire the heater at them until the, and make them put it in play. Like you don't need to nibble. You don't need to to it, it, you. You have a game plan when you're attacking a team. And you don't really want to change your game plan. Like Ben Higgins is coming to the plate. I know I can get him out on sliders away. But if I'm up twelve nothing, throw the heater. Throw just throw it down the middle. Let him hit it. Get yourself a win, man, and 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 try to have more crisp innings. That. That was tough, and and um, you did see some flashes of really good stuff from him. The changeup definitely will play at this level, certainly. Um, he, he he mixed it up fairly well, but, yeah, man, nibbling when you're up that much just doesn't make any sense to me. Had an interesting situation in the first inning on a, uh, a pop-up 
that went into the Padres' dugout. Wilmer yeah. Flores, first baseman for the Giants, went over to try to make a play, tumbled over the railing into the Padres' dugout, stayed in the game briefly, but then had to come out in the next inning. Yeah. Now, it was mentioned on the, the broadcast on the Padres, certainly that you know the Padres gave him plenty of room there to make that play in the dugout, but then weren't there to you know try to catch him or soften his fall over the railing. Now, the Giants' broadcast went a little bit deeper into that and paulie we have the audio here we had yeah. Dwayne kuiper and mike Kruko. on mike kruko on the giants broadcast on that same play crickets this is during the uh instant replay yeah wow i mean that's just something you hate to see I mean, everybody standing there could have done something about it oh my god give me a small break. We missed the part where he says, shame, shame on them, shame on the Padres, which, I mean, Mike Kruko, I, I respect that guy a lot. He's He and Kuyper constantly, every year, the number one broadcast team, they're voted by whoever votes for that stuff. Uh, Mike Kruko's seen, I would guess, upwards of 50,000 baseball games or something in his life. I was really trying to remember a time when a guy ran over to the dugout and everyone propped him up. Now, the thing is, is Flores got, he got his glove on the ball. I mean, the ball hit in his glove, and his momentum carried before he dropped the ball. It would have been a spectacular play. Everybody knows you clear out because here's the deal. If Crony and Kim and Manny are standing there and they catch him as soon as he hits that, that uh, padding, that's interference. The ball's in play. It's still live. He's going for the ball. Imagine Kruko's reaction. And it's not safe. It's it's not safe. Imagine this guy metal spikes and he's tumbling forward. Yeah, and, ima and imagine Kruko's reaction if he goes over to make a play and there's Manny Machado to put up the brakes so that he doesn't come into the dugout, put his hands out and keep him away. It's just I, I just I was like, what are we making a big deal out of a play that we've seen a thousand times? Like I mean, I certainly have heard the baseball wisdom that if it's an opposing player. You're not going to say anything. Why, why would you help them out? Now, what what do you do if it's your guy coming over? You're like, are you saying things like close to the rail, you know, at the rail? What are Got you, room, got room, got do you, room. Do you kind of get low and try to catch him if you know he might be going over? What can you do if it's your player? And should you do at least some of that if it's the opposing player? I just, I, I don't. I mean, you don't want Wilmer Flores to fall on you and you get hurt no, because you the, were trying to catch him and as the, well. The thing is, is just like we've all seen that play so many times to where I can't recall. Like, what did he want us to do? Get one of those firemen thing and hold it out under so he falls on that? <laughs> I, I didn't understand. I don't. I don't. I don't want Wilmer Flores to get hurt. Certainly, Wilmer probably needs to pull up on that one, right? Pull up, know, knowing that the the railing's going to be there. He really made a valiant effort, and it would have been a spectacular catch. And like I said, he did get glove on the ball. I mean, he was still like very much active in making that play. I just couldn't, I couldn't get my head around. And I guess they went back to it in the seventh inning, and they were still pissy about the that the Padres didn't weren't there to to boost him up and do a trust fall with him, which was weird. It was very weird to me, and I thought a little bit unnecessary. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he almost had that ball. I mean, he was re really, really on it. So, yeah, and it's happening in light speed. Guy is running over, running over, ball, 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 and then he goes over. What are you supposed you, to do? You saw uh, uh, one or two of the Padres players, you know, they're looking up at the ball. They don't yeah. want to get hit, you know, by a, a pop-up that lands on their yeah. head either. So they're kind of diving Scurrying. out of the way to clear out of the area. I, I just think – I mean, if there's a way you can help a guy from not, you know, hitting hard against the bench or something, sure, go ahead and help them. But for the most part, there's not a lot you can do there. Think about to save, a, you know, an, an opposing player from going into your dugout. Think about football when the guy's running out of out of bounds and everybody just moves and the guy slides and slams into the bench. You know, the other option is to stand there like a brick wall and the guy runs flat into you. That doesn't look necessarily good either. <laughs> I just thought, it, it, for me, it was much ado about nothing until people started tweeting me like, "Dude, you got to hear these guys losing their mind about this, uh, about this thing, you know, about him going into the dugout." So. You sent that over to us. I'm like, "We're up twelve nothing. I don't care." Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, I mean, at that point, we weren't. I don't think. When, well, that was the time, first inning. That but, was the first inning. But when the, but by, the by the time I heard it, the audio, yeah. it was twelve nothing. Unless I didn't you were watching the yeah. Giants broadcast, it was twelve nothing by the time anybody here saw it. Right, but at the time, it was zero zero game.
I know, but by the time it was brought yeah, to Yeah, Paul just couldn't get worked up about it. By the yeah, time yeah, it came yeah, to yeah, his yeah, yeah. attention that the Giants right. had said something, the game was 12 nothing. It did lead to the very, I thought, odd scene, which <laughs> rightfully so. <laughs> oh, that was but Bob weird. Melvin, back in the Padres dugout with Creeped all the players, me out like saying, well, know. we'll never see Bob Melvin in a Padres dugout again. No, first weekend, he's back in there. Creep me out Obviously, to no end. you know, concerned for his player, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it was a very strange scene with the dugout camera looking and seeing Schilt and Bo Mel. I mean, it would have been weird in the Padres. It would have been weird to see right like there. Tori Lavulo in the Padres yeah. dugout, let alone the most recent Padres manager, like literally from last year. Him walking out, giving a head nod. Do you see Schilt behind him looking like a straight serial killer? He's walking out. <laughs> here's Schilt staring at him like Jack Torrance. It was fantastic. Get out of my personal space. Yeah, please beat it. You don't belong in here, Bob. It was great. Well, Padres will uh, will face the Giants again later this week, of course, up in San Francisco. So we'll uh, we'll renew hostilities at Oracle Park starting on Friday. All right, we'll come back. Uh, hour number two. Talk about some of the other games. Saturday's loss, although Mike Chill had some positive things to say about that loss. Coming up next year on 97.3 The Fame.
One more uh, note on yesterday's game, because I watched or heard, I think, every at-bat of the weekend's games, except for one. I was driving into Channel 10 yesterday, listening to Jesse and Tony, and the Giants were up and had a bit of a rally. And when I walked into the studio and I flipped on the television, something had happened involving an infield fly. <laughs> And I never saw it. I, I never saw a replay. What? Because Jeff in the chat mentioned that, that was Bob Melvin so was upset. Bizarre. What happened on that play yesterday on the infield fly rule that was called? So Kimmy goes back for a, a pop fly. And initially when it was hit, it looked like it was going to land in the infield. And you saw him just backpedal, which is the backpedal bit. is the It's the worst feeling ever. When you're backpedaling for, for a ball, more than, I'd say, probably six steps. You're like, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. If I'm it's dead, more I'm than dead, a I'm couple dead. of steps, you should turn around. Turn around. Run to the spot and then turn back turn back around. around. Yeah. But he was in full backpedal mode. It was right in no man's land. And we caught a huge, huge break there, in my opinion, by getting the infield fly rule banged there. I saw a lot of people saying, "Now I'm, I'm both." I mean, he was in left field. Right? Yeah, I mean, he was. He it was, was nowhere near the infield. He was probably ten steps back from from the dirt, the edge of the dirt, and it was ten a pr big... premature infield fly call so, from the umpires. Apparently, and, and Mud and Don were were trying to explain it to. There's some, there's some rule about reasonably catching it like it can he is it reasonable that that infielder is going to catch the ball with regular with efforts. regular effort and this this was in that in that umpire's opinion this was regular effort now it landed over his glove he we dropped so Bo was laying like next Profar to me far probably had a better chance yeah and and Bo asks me six years old he goes how did we get him out there and I, I just started to sweat I just started to sweat. I go, how do I explain this to him? We're not there yet. Like, we're still playing T-ball. And I said, all right, man, here's the best way I can explain it. If there's runners on first and second less than two outs, right, one out or zero outs, and a ball is hit in the infield, the batter is out. And he said, why? He goes, what if they don't catch it? I go, because they can, they can let it drop and the base runners – I was like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it to you. Like, <laughs> it's to protect the offense, I guess. And somebody said on Twitter, I hate the infield fly rule. I say, just just don't call it anymore and let's see what happens. Do you know how many innings it would, you know how much it would cost you? Like, you say that, it would be the worst thing ever. Guy lets it drop. I has double play. I mean, almost every time. Unless the guy, I mean, but. You can also think a ball hits straight in the air. Everyone's just tearing around the bases. But if he catches it, you're doubled off. So it it's, it's been suggested, and I think A.J. Cassaville, by the way, congratulations oh, to yes. MLB.com's A.J. Cassaville became a dad on opening day. Pretty awesome. Uh, which is very cool. He had a cool tweet. I wasn't at Padres opening day because it was my opening day as a Padre uh, becoming a father. So congratulations to A.J. But he said... Do away with the infield fly rule. He because, always says that. I mean, you can't. Wouldn't it be a, a thrilling play trying to decide whether the guy's going to drop it on purpose no. or let it go? It and would not be. You have chaos on the base pads. I mean, baseball is entertainment, and that would be entertaining if the ball was popped up. Hey, if you're the batter, don't pop it up when there's runners on base. Yes, it's just that easy. We I know it's not that easy. Mile an hour sinker on your it's hand. not just that easy, of course. It. But just take go it the to, other I'll way. Go, to op, go oppo with it. But you would never put it in the umpire's hands of trying to decide, you know, whether it's a reasonably caught pop fly or not. I'm just saying that there now, is an alternative. Mudley made a really good point because Bob Melvin came out to argue. But had he caught the ball, there were going to be runners at first and second. Because he dropped the ball, they advanced to second and third. That's two more runners in scoring position, right? Even though the guy's out. Well, had he dropped it, it probably would have been bases loaded and there had been no outs at all. So if that rule's not called. If they don't call it, it's a single. There was one the out. bases loaded with one out. If they don't of call it, second and bases third with loaded, two outs. Bases loaded. I would rather have bases out. loaded with one out than one second out. and third with two outs for sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, because the batter wouldn't be out. He would have reached, and the other guys would have probably made it to the next base still like yeah, they did yeah, anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why, that's why he argued. But once you've called it, you can't take it back. It's, right. There's a no, it's a no take backs. It's like playground rules. You, no take backs. Once you've said infield fly, it doesn't matter. At that point, Hassan Kim doesn't really have to go after it at all. 
It's just t- like just like guys oftentimes will drop it on purpose once the infield fly rule has been called just to see if they can see if they can deke, deke a guy into leaving. And and I saw it on the Sunday night baseball game happened with the Cardinals and Dodgers last night. Hey, drop it. What's the you know maybe someone will make a mistake. So once that happens, doesn't really matter if if Ha Sung Kim catches it or not. So you can't the say. Well, it wasn't that you know, you can complain to the umpire and go, that was a lousy call. You shouldn't have called the infield fly. And you might be right, but there's nothing they can do about it. Once they've called it, they've called it. Yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't have to be as obviously evidence. It doesn't have to be clearly within the infield dirt, right? Again, reasonable no. effort from the infielders to to catch but it. But it shouldn't be halfway on the left field. Either. I've seen some egregious ones over the years that you make make you shake your head, but um, yeah, this one, I mean, look, we caught a break. We didn't catch a lot of breaks last year. I'll take them as, uh, as we can get them. Uh, we need a contestant. We get a new prize this month for Take on Woods, another getaway to Las Vegas, concert tickets to Cool in the Gang, I believe. Yeah, Cool in wow. the Gang coming to the uh, Westgate. So if you'd like to play Take on Woods here in a couple of minutes, 833-288-0973, 833-288-0973. Quickly on Saturday's game, Dylan Cease making his Padres debut, and, and he wasn't bad. Four and two-thirds innings, two hits, two earned runs, six strikeouts. Uh, the Padres just could not get anything going offensively against Jordan Hicks, the converted reliever who uh, has added some pitches, had some nasty stuff. I mean, impressive work by Jordan Hicks. He also got a little bit lucky when he, the Padres did load the bases, uh, Jackson Merrill, hit a line drive on him and go, here we go. And, of course, yeah. it went right at the shortstop. So, uh, you know, Padres got some breaks yesterday. Giants got a big break. And then, of course, the game was uh, completely blown out in the eighth inning when Tom Cosgrove came on and allowed six runs, including the first career home run for Jung Ho Lee as the uh, the Giants won it 9-6. to six. Now, it was 9-1 to one going into the bottom of the ninth yeah. when the Padres rallied for five runs. Eggy Rosario and Graham Pauly both getting home runs, including Pauly's first major league hit being a home run off the uh, the pole in right field. And Mike Schilt said after the game, he likes that fight. He likes to see that fight from his team, even down nine to one, battling in the ninth inning. And you can say it doesn't matter, or you can argue it had a carryover effect. Padres ended up scoring 17 runs in a four-inning span from the ninth inning on Saturday through the third inning yesterday. Do you believe that there's any carryover, that that fight means anything to you when you're down 9-1, to Woods? Not really. I don't. Um, Back to Cease, though, quickly. A couple of bleeders cost him. That that bleeder that Profar decided to dive for, uh, (laughs) slide for, that that ended up scooting down the line. I mean, again. And Profar said, I didn't want to collide with um, Wade, was it? Yeah. Or or Eggy? No, Wade, I think. It's been an issue uh, here the last few years. Um, Yeah, I mean, some bad luck, certainly. I I like Dylan Cease. I like what he brings to the table. I think he's going to get better. Same with Michael King. Like, they both have swing and miss stuff. Uh, they're going to be fine once they settle in, in my opinion. Uh, and we'll get to the, the Joe Musgrove uh, game later. That's the one I'm probably the most concerned about, what I saw on Friday. But, yeah, man, just kind of a kind of a clunker of a game and a very cool moment for Grand Paul. You don't want to take that away from him. I mean, and getting it off of Camilo Duvall, is, that's quite an accomplishment. He's really, really good. Uh, it, was, it was so reminiscent watching a game like this. We had so many of those games last year, the, the blowout games where it's like, Bob Melvin would put in Josh Hader in a weird spot, you know, just to get him some work. And I uh, don't know that it cost the Giants yesterday uh, because it, it was not a close game at all. But, yeah, Camilo Do- Doval coming in in a blowout and, and giving up five runs, that's a guy that's not really used to pitching in that situation either. So it was just kind of a, it was a wonky game. Um, I, didn't, I don't really buy into the momentum thing from game to game. It's different pitchers. It's a different lineup. Was I excited to see him get his first uh, knock? Yeah, hell yeah, I thought it was great. You know, he dodged a lot of traffic, so which he created. Um, you know, he'll clearly be better next time. Sorry, sorry, I wanted to play the uh, one of Schilt talking about the fight. You might think I'm nuts, but I'm more proud about this club, or maybe equally as proud. It's representative of two ways. As the first game when we came back, and obviously won, clearly, don't misrepresent this, we're here to win games. Um, but being able to come back down nine to three, that's, you know, who you are is what you do when you're not completely comfortable. And no one was loving that situation we were in, but not one guy was like giving in it one iota. 
I uh, I don't know that it means a ton. I, I did see a lot of outcry after the game, after Pauly's home run late. Let's see him in the lineup every day. Yeah, he did sure. get a start yesterday, had an RBI single, knocked home Jackson Merrill, ended up one for five with three strikeouts. I don't know. I guess time will tell. Does Graham Pauly belong in the big leagues yet? Should he be the everyday guy for the Padres at third base while Manny's still recovering and DHing? I, I I don't know if he's earned more starts or if we'll see Tyler Wade back out there today. Um, I'm not sure. But I do know that if he's not going to play every day, I, I tend to agree with everybody that says he needs to go be playing then down in, in double-A or triple-A and not just be sitting on the bench on the big league. Yeah, I mean, I, I've liked what I've seen uh, from him. And, yeah, you, you can't, early in that game, gets the knock, gets the RBI. That was a cool moment, too. So uh, there's a lot to like about what these guys are doing right now. And I don't know. I don't know what it is. It, it's because there's a higher ceiling with those guys. You know what the ceiling is for Tyler Wade. You, we've seen it. He's at it. You know, that's what it is. But with Grand Paul, you're like, sky's the limit, man. So if you're going to do this, don't half-ass it. You know, if you're really going to inject the youth movement into this team, I think fans can get behind that. Like, I think we can. And and I, at least the, the fans I've talked to are like, no, let's see it, man. Let's see these guys sink or swim. Um, and, and so far... So far, they're they're doing more swimming than sinking, that's for sure. All right, we'll get back to the Padres in a minute. Right now, though, it is time to play a little Take on Woods. All right, got a couple options here. Let's try Andy today. Andy, are you there? I'm here. Ah, Andy, you're in. Take on Woods is brought to you by Valvoline Instant Oil Change. It only takes 15 minutes. You don't have to get out of your car. For directions and discounts, go to SoCalOilChange.com. That's SoCalOilChange.com. And as I said, got a brand new prize up for grabs here in the month of April. Happy April. We're a quarter of the way through 2024 already. If you can beat or tie Woods, you'll qualify for our grand prize drawing two-night stay at the Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino and two tickets to the legendary funk group Cool and the Gang returning by popular demand to the stage, their residency through 2024. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com and check out the $70 million in room renovations at the Westgate, home of legendary Vegas fun. All right, you get to pick our category in our musical trivia challenge. Still have Sunshine Through the Decades. That's an all two-second song edition featuring the word sunshine in all the titles. Chow Time, the word eat key in all of those answers and our new category creatures of the cold those are five musical answers with animals you'd find in snowy climates so sunshine through the decades chow time or creatures of the cold andy sunshine sunshine through the decades Ooh, we're getting musical today all right so you've got five songs and to score each point you need to give me the title of the song and the artist Polly has put this all together We've got little clips. You uh, you will hear them all, and they all include the word sunshine in each title. And they each come from a different decade as well, starting with the 60s and finishing in the 2000s. So I don't think I can help you any more than that. Andy, are you ready to play? Let's do it. All right, 60 seconds on the clock. Sunshine through the decades, beginning in the 60s. All two-second songs. Your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck, Andy. Let's take on... Woods. I need to laugh, and when the sun is out. All right, sound number two. Wonder this time where she's gone. Oh boy, where's the sunshine gone? And I don't know. Incorrect. Let's go to song number three. Walking on Sunshine, Katrina in the way. Correct. Song number four. I got to blow three feet. Deep. Oh, boy. Where's the sunshine gone? All right, number five. <laughs> uh, nope. All right, That's go back one. to the first one. Oh, boy. I need to laugh. And when the sun is out. No, idea. no, let's go to the fourth one again. I don't know if we're going to get any more. All right, you got the one. You got Walking on Sunshine from the 80s, 1983, Katrina and the Waves. First one was Good Day Sunshine, 1966 by the Beatles. 
Second one was Ain't No Sunshine, 1971 by Bill Withers. 1999 was Steal My Sunshine by Len. And 2007's Pocket Full of Sunshine by Natasha Benningfield. I think I forgot to put that one on there, but that's that's correct. The artist on that one, Paulie? Yeah. All right. That's probably not going to do it. We'll see how Woods does. Woods doesn't get the category going up against Andy, but I do have to tell him that this is an all two-second song edition Ooh, boy. of Take On Woods. All right. So... You know how it works. 60 seconds on the clock. Your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck, Woods. Let's take on Andy. I need to laugh. And when the sun is out. All right, come back to it. All right, sound number two. Wonder this time where she's gone. Bill Withers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ain't no sunshine. Correct. Song number three. Walking on sunshine. Katrina and the waves. Correct. Song number four. That's the last steal my sunshine. Correct. Song number five. That sounds terrible. I have no idea. All right, go back to song number one. I need to laugh. And when the sun is out. It's the Beatles. Is it the Beatles? It the is Beatles. the Beatles. Yep. It's uh something sunshine. I don't know. Yes. And the last one again. Oh, God. I have no idea. What was that? <laughs> no idea on that one? No. All right, you got three, which is a 3-1 win. <laughs> sunshine through the decade. So we had a different song each decade with Sunshine okay. in the title. The, the Beatles? Beatles one is Good Day Sunshine. Good Day Sunshine. She could have gotten. The last one, uh, you did not get Pocket Full of Sunshine, Natasha Bedingfield. Oh, yeah. Well, that was... Didn't know that one? No. No, no, you know. no. I thought you might have played that one a few times. No. We didn't... Really? No. No. I'm surprised you didn't play that one. You absolutely, you play absolutely play played that song <laughs> on the song radio. Right oh, oh, there's the almost no, I mean, there's no way you could have not played that song on the radio. It was hmm. everywhere in the late 2000s. can't believe I missed that Beatles one. But maybe you can get around to radio until a little bit after I was that. thinking of Here Comes the Sun, and I knew it wasn't that. It wasn't. I've never heard that song in my life. I, no, I've never heard I'm of it. surprised that you didn't know. You think that we one. would play that on? I mean, we played like yeah, weird know. stuff. I have but... no idea what you actually played <laughs> on that station. All right, well, congratulations, Woods. You get the win Dubs in dub. our all two second song edition. We'll, we'll try to qualify someone for the new trip to Vegas again tomorrow. When we come back, uh, we got Don't Do This. We already teased one story uh, fan behavior at Penco Park, an issue over the weekend. What are we doing here? We also had a. <laughs> Unbelievable mistake in the NCAA women's basketball tournament over the weekend as well. Get to all of that coming up next with Ben Woods after a check of traffic here on 97 through the fan.
Uh, let's jump right into it. Don't do this for a Monday. And we'll start with the almost unbelievable scene from Portland, Oregon yesterday in the Women's Elite Eight. North Carolina State set to take on top-seeded Texas for a spot in the Final Four. And as the teams were practicing, you know, shooting around before the game, they realized that one side's three-point line was noticeably shorter than the other side's <laughs> three-point line on the court. And they got out the tape measures, <laughs> did the whole thing. And it's true that, that one's was the correct 22 feet, 1.75 inches from the center of the basket to the top of the arc. The other one was definitely shorter than that. Now, here's, here's there's a double problem here. First of all, they had already played four regional semifinal games on the exact same court the last two days, and no one had noticed it <laughs> the entire time. That's but unbelievable. Once you like, saw it, you couldn't unsee it. Was you, one team's like three point shots just coming up short every single time? Or going and, long, I would think. If, or just if their toes were on the, the line and they were actually shorter than they expected it to be, they should have been going long. I don't know. But that led to the other issue was they had this game to play. And they didn't really have any way to fix it before game time. I mean, you could try to strip like strip the entire court, put a tape Re out, but it was going to repaint and strip the court would have taken hours. And they didn't have hours, so the coaches eventually just said, I guess we'll each go each direction once, and we'll just live with it and play with it. So they did. <laughs> NC State oh ended God. up winning 76-66 over Texas. Um, and they are repainting. They have one more game to play there today. So they are restripping and repainting the court. So it should be, it should be accurate for today's game, but... Uh, the co One of the coaches said, I hate to say this, but I have a lot of colleagues that would say only in women's basketball. I mean, it's a shame, really, that it's even happened, but it is what it is. It's hard to believe. No one noticed it the first yeah, couple of days. I'd say so. That's shocking, actually. And then they finally did. And, um, yeah, and there was nothing they could do about it for the game yesterday. That's terrible. That's pretty terrible. bad. Yeah, it's bad. And I don't think they've ever figured out who exactly is to blame. <laughs> the NCAA contracts out, obviously, the Moda Center, which is where the, the Portland Trailblazers play. They have a different court for the NBA, which has longer three-point lines. I'm assuming they've been accurate all season long, but maybe they should measure it just to be sure. And then they made this new court for the NCAA tournament, and someone just biffed it, royally messed up the, the measurements and did not get the three-point line accurate on there. I'd say that's a detail you don't want to miss. No. Uh, it's, and, and you're right. The cra it's crazy that so many coaches missed it. Uh, playing games. So uh, this is just a little PSA from your old pal Woods and your friends here at Ben and Woods. Um, I, I've seen the last couple of days a lot of video coming in from uh, Petco Park. So I saw a brawl in Gallagher Square on opening day. Uh, might I remind you guys that, you know, that was also the remembrance for our beloved uh, departed pacifist owner Peter Seidler. There was a huge brawl out in Gallagher Square on Thursday. Then there was a slapping incident on Friday. Saw a pottery fan went viral, yeah. all over the place. Uh, TMZ everywhere. I saw that. I saw that video. Paulie's playing it on our YouTube stream. Yeah, female everywhere. Padres fan got in the face of a couple Giants fans. Slapped the fire out of one. He then pushed her. It was out in right field. Uh, and then the probably the worst one happened on Sunday. I do believe. Or no, on Saturday, a uh, couple of young kids ish. Took on a couple of old heads, and the old heads prevailed. Um, and I mean, it was it was right there in the middle of the concourse, guys. These are the ones that we've seen on film. These are just the ones that we've seen. We, this isn't this isn't what we want here. This isn't what Peter wants. This isn't what anybody wants. If you can't control yourself, then you shouldn't drink at a game. And that's these three incidents very clearly fueled. Uh, by alcohol, you, we don't want this. You don't want our ballpark to turn into that. You just don't. You don't want it to turn into, um, I'm all about rivalries, and I talk as much smack as the next person, you know, on Twitter. But, like, if you're out at a game and you've had 17 cut waters, it, it's, it's, not, it's not the right recipe for a peaceful, fun atmosphere. So just please, please, don't turn it into Chavez 
latrine. You know what I'm saying? And we can't, you can't say a word about that fan base when this is the exact same thing that's happening and, here. And I don't subscribe to the, the people who say, well, you know, Padres are selling all this alcohol at the games. They get what they deserve. You should be able to sell beer and drinks at the ballpark. And fans should be able to enjoy those if they want during the game without turning into absolute morons in the stands. And if you can't, as what said, then don't drink. But you know, I mean, are people getting overserved? Like, what what's happening? Because it has been a pretty rough I mean, trend I, for I, a while. I purposefully don't drink at games. Like, I drank uh, some some booze in the parking lot, um, but I cut it off when I walked into the stadium because you know. Some guy says something that I don't like, and I say something he doesn't like, and the next thing you know, here we go. It's just not a fun atmosphere when that's kind of lingering around. So let's not let's not turn it into to a, a place that's not fun to go watch. You know, certainly. I mean, I mean, it used to be like staying. I'm staying home on a Friday night when the Dodgers are in town because well, there's beer fest for hours before the game, and there's already a ton of fights between those two fan bases, and then now it's just. Petco Park in general, it seems to be. It's it's not a good, not a good look, not a good trend. Carlos said you guys were slamming shots beforehand. Maybe they, they did the same. I had two shots, three Is hours. He talking about on our broadcast at six thirty. Three in the hours before the game, <laughs> and I mean, again, I, I cut it off as soon as I walked into. By the, the stadium. way, some people, you know, can have a few drinks, maybe not even fight one or two more than they should, and not also have to take punches at people. Yeah, it's tough. If if you're the guy who hey, if I get if I have four beers in me, I'm ready to go and start fighting people. That's a problem too. Yeah. If you're like, hey, everything's great in the world, and you get into an Uber at the end of the game, go ahead, enjoy I'm a, yourself. I'm more of a lover now yeah. when I drink than a fighter, certainly. So let's just let's just mind our p's and q's. All right. Uh, finally, a little doo doo this on a Monday. D D mega doo doo. Congratulations to graduate transfer San Diego State Jacob Reardon who tossed a no-hitter on Friday, came in the second game of a doubleheader against New Mexico, San Diego State, completing the Mountain West sweep. Now, because it was the second game of a no-hitter, you can raise the old, it was only a seven-inning game, so. Second game of a doubleheader? Yeah, seven, yeah, se second game of the doubleheader. Seven-inning no-hitter. Take it. But, hey, it's still a no-hitter. It's uh, the ninth no-hitter in Aztecs history. They had one last year by T.J. Fontaine, and I'm assuming it doesn't say here that the other seven were all by Steven Strasburg, if I remember correctly. No, he didn't have seven, but he had he had at least one, if not a couple, during his time at San Diego State. Paul, do you remember? You were, were you there when Steven Strasburg was there? I was, but I think this was the year before I got there. Was it? Yeah, I mean, he had an unbelievable or no, college no, he, career. He graduated in June. I started there the very next August. A couple months later. So, uh, congratulations to Jacob Reardon getting that no-no for SDSU on Friday night. And that's Don't and Do Do This for a Monday. That was Don't Do This with Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan. All right, we'll get back to some uh, Padres when we return. Talk about Friday's game. Are we, uh, are we at all worried now? Two starts into the season about one no-no Joe Musgrove. Not the Best start for Joe, but some encouraging signs later in Friday's start as well. We'll talk about it when we come back with Ben Woods on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Ben and I doing some serious coping uh, in here, aren't we? Wouldn't you say that's a little bit of a coping uh, scene? Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, when you're talking about starters and the the length that they can give you, um, that's we were just kind of trying to figure out how many innings did our starters actually give us over the weekend. That was the big bugaboo, replacing all of those innings lost by Lugo, who was Fantastic, by the way. I watched him throw uh, for Kansas City the other day. He looked spectacular. Um, I've not seen Waka pitch yet. Um, and then, of course, Blake Snell is still getting ramped Waka up. Waka lost his first game. Did he? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, no, no, Lugo lost his first game. No, I... Lugo. Oh, he might have lost, but he went six, I think, shutout innings. Did I don't he? know that he lost. I, I'm not sure. But I know he was he was carving him up because I was watching that game. I know I had a prize picks on Lugo, <laughs> and he did not strike out. <laughs> More batters than I was. I was hoping he would strike out more, and he struck no. out less. By the way, this uh, hour on Ben Woods is brought to you by Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Cash in on basketball's big moments with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Use code KWFN for a first deposit match of up to one hundred dollars. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Now I know we're not supposed to say the words. Uh, it's still early, but right. is it early to be? Worried about length of pitchers right now? Not length of pictures, pitchers, more quality. Uh, I think of 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 what you're seeing um, as you as you look through. I'm talking s- strictly length, though. Like, oh, he only went four and a third inning. I mean, it's their first time through right now. Yeah, but you're also going around the league and seeing a lot of other teams ones, twos, and threes giving some really really nice length early with dominant performances. So we really got neither. Uh, from the three starters this weekend in Joe Musgrove on Friday, Dylan Cease on Saturday, Michael King yesterday. Interested to see what Matt Waldron does today, uh, certainly, but he's not a doesn't feel like he's a guy that's going to go out and give you seven either. Right. So um, you Darvish even was, you know, what did he give you on, on, on opening day? Was he five and two thirds? Uh, maybe four and two thirds the uh, the the game before that. So Darvish look, on Thursday went every team. Is going to five do, innings. Yeah, every team is going to do things their way. They're going to use the bullpen when they feel they need to. They're going to limit pitch counts early in the season. Um, but you have seen some pretty dominating performances early with six, seven innings thrown by starters. Um, it's all player dependent. But I think we averaged right around five innings a start. If you throw Musgrove, who, by the way, you know, got down early, and yes. There's something to be said for getting you through five and two thirds, especially when you started as poorly as you did. What would I would be curious to know what the Dodgers starting pitchers went in their four games this weekend, because both the Dodgers and the Padres, they've had the weird spring. They had to ramp things up quicker than other teams in baseball. Talk about other teams. All their starters went six, seven innings. Well, they didn't have this weird got to fly to Korea for a week and play a couple of games early. Got to get everybody on a different you know, schedule, schedule, yeah, throwing schedule and all of that. I, I just, I'm curious. I don't think at this point length is a, a consideration. Girth more important for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, everybody's everybody's on a pitch count. You know, like 80 or 90 early. And I mean, I know that uh, not necessarily every opponent is, but it seems like for the Padres, they're keeping guys under. 90 or so in their first outing. You're not going to get much, even if you're efficient, you're not going to get much past six. Five is fine. You would have liked to have seen Michael King with a 12-run lead get more than four innings, but he just couldn't throw strikes. And, and you know, that was certainly an issue that he's going to have to, to fix to have success. I want to talk about Joe specifically, though. The pros and the cons from his first two performances of the year. We'll get to that right after a check of traffic on 97.3 The Fam. 73 The Fan Traffic Center. Here's Kelly Danik. Got a two-car collision now on the Fairmont Avenue on-ramp to westbound 8. It's over the right shoulder. And watch out for some debris in the fast lane on eastbound 8 right before Greenfield. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. So to, to answer Polly's question, Glass now went six. Bobby Miller went six. Yamamoto went five. Pretty nasty innings for him. Six, six, five, and five. Six, six, five, and five. He also went one in his first start. That's true. That's true. So he's averaging... Three. A, a robust three. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> it's got to be fair with all the stats. It's a lot of money for three innings. It's a, a lot, lot, of, it's a lot of money, Paulie. Yikes. No, but, uh, yeah, and it, it's not just them. I mean, it's it's other teams, um, you know, letting their guys go out there and, and establish some 
get some length out of them. And, and that's just something that, that we need to, to be mindful of, keep, keep an eye on. Um, I know Mike Schilt and, and A.J. Preller and all the guys uh, in the Brain Trust, Ruben the Ablett, they're watching that too because it's going to be important. The bullpen already, let's be honest, the one thing, the one area we weren't too concerned about doesn't look great so far. So it, it, it needs to even out. It will even out. The I'm Padres certain... ha- do have a bullpen problem. They do. But it's not. I don't think it's the problem that they don't have any good arms in their bullpen. No. They have a lot of good arms in their bullpen. Is it where they're employed? No, I think the problem de- is deployed, I mean. Is right now they're getting like two really good outings and one horrific outing. Yeah. And that's tough. It's like having a bunch of landmines in your bullpen. And if you're Mike Schilt, you can go to Tom, Tom Cosgrove and he can be fantastic. He can be absolutely unhittable with that. And then he goes and gives up six in an inning. Or you can go to Pedro Avila, and he can give you exactly what you need from him. Three innings, you know, in long relief, hold on to a big lead and win. Or he can go out and look terrible. It's almost better if you just have, like, two guys who absolutely stink at the end of your bullpen. Send them down, bring up someone else. But right now, like, which pitcher would you say, well, we can't we can't bring him into the game. Brito had a couple bad ones, and they had a good one. I mean, it's... Right now, it's just the unpredictability of the Padres' bullpen that is making life difficult. You know, Robert Suarez, oh, he can't be hit. Then he gives him a home run. They all look good at times, good enough that you're going to keep going to them, but then they all have their struggles. And I know every relief pitcher is going to give up runs. They're not going to be perfect, but right now it just feels like like a bit of a like a minefield that Mike Schilt is tiptoeing through whenever he's using his own bullpen. I said it early last year. You know, Bob Melvin would go to the bullpen, and it was like, what gas can am I going to tonight? Is is it going to be the Garcia gas can? But it's, you knew Garcia was going to be a gas okay. can when he went to Well, him. then let's go to Honeywell. Oh, he's uh, a gas But again, there's no one that you can tell me right now, don't go to that guy. No, whatever you do, don't go to that guy in the Padres bullpen. I don't trust him. Or you can say that about all of them right now. Yeah, that's. I think it's fair to say. About I mean, the most. only guy that I really trust at the this moment would be like, yeah, who's the one guy? Probably like, Yuki guy. Matsui. Matsui. Yeah. He's the one guy that I trust the most yeah. right now. But everybody else has shown the ability to both get a lot of outs and also give up some runs. Wandy looked. All right, Wandy looked pretty good. So I mean, there, those. I mean, two... that was in a very low leverage situation sure. yesterday, and I think that was just his second outing. But I, I did want to talk about Joe. In particular, and the first start in Korea it was state to a big lead, was only able to go two and two thirds innings. A lot of mitigating circumstances. First of all, it's Korea, Dodgers lineup, weird, weird game. And, you know, he only made it through two and two thirds. Expecting more when he came back uh, against the Giants in his first home start. And he gave up the three runs in the first inning on Friday. Definitely looked off. But battled back and ended up pitching five and two-thirds innings, only gave up one more run after that, and looked like he got locked in to a better spot by the time. Now, by the time he left with no offense on Friday night, Padres were already in a bad situation, and you can't really put your team in that that sort of hole and expect to win the game. But do you feel like Joe's going to be absolutely fine, no worries about it, or are there... You know, from spring training, didn't have the the sharpest stuff, and now through two starts, six point three five ERA, not looking completely Joe Musgrove like early in the season. I mean, look, man, ninety one down the middle isn't going to get big leaguers out, and and he knows that too, and he just was not spotting up at all, and everything was middle, you know, and they were they were hammering him pretty good, even the outs were fairly loud uh, on Friday night, it just was not a good start, and and conversely. Uh, across the diamond, Kyle Harrison was fantastic. I mean, he really was. He was fantastic and uh, really fooling fooling the guy. So I don't know, man. I, I thought, you know, Joe did settle in, um, was able to give you five and two-thirds, which after the start he had, I'm like, oh, my God, this is a two-inning night, and we are it's Pedro Avila time, and we're just going to wear this one. And, and I think, you know, I think you're going to see some of that this year. I, we've seen Mike Schilt manage really aggressively. We saw him – He's not – I don't feel like he's going to leave guys out there to die. You know what I mean? Like like our old skipper has done and did over the weekend. You know, when his team was basically out of it, right, he's like, you're – this. enjoy your debut. You're going to wear it. Like, it does feel like – I mean, Melvin did that yesterday. He did it yesterday. But it does feel like she won't do that unless the game's already kind of been decided. Right. You right. Know, if, you're, if you're down 10 to 1 – 
even if the guy's out there struggling, it's like, hey man, you just got to wait. Got to wait. One. Take one for the team. We got to. We need three more innings. Yeah. So, the, 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 like yesterday, Jeffries was out there, and it was his second inning, and they came out right before the. The Hassan Kim at bat and meeting on the mound and like yeah. the trainers were out there like, are you going to take him out or not here? And they left him in. And of course, what next pitch three is run a three bomb. run homer. Guess Bob should have taken him out at that point because it's game set and match then a little late on the trigger. But you know, I, Mike, Mike Schilt definitely seems a little more aggressive in terms of his managing. Yeah. And he went to kind of the, the depths of the bullpen on Friday night with Kolek and, and De Los Santos and. Um, but yeah, it was it was a pretty frustrating frustrating game to watch. Um, <laughs> it, it, baseball's so weird too because you saw Eggy, you know, rip that ball. Nobody nobody on, nobody out, and rips that ball in the gap, and you get thrown out at third base. It just every time we got something going, we stepped on our own junk, you know, to to get that going. You don't know how a game's going to turn out ever. Um, but every well, t- usually when you get three home runs from Manny and Tatis, yeah, that's an easy win good. most games. It's not an eight to three loss. You, so that you feel pretty good if, about it. Yeah, that was what that was a I bit I of a surprise. You, yeah, what if I yeah, told what if Fernando I told you? Tatis Jr. is going to hit two home runs? Are, Manny was going to have. Home now, runs. should we look at this the other way? Padres played a a dangerous Dodgers lineup that went on and, and took three of four from the Cardinals. Rallied yesterday with home runs from Teoscar Hernandez and Max Muncie in the eighth inning, and they've taken on a Giants team that. Invested a ton in their lineup in Chapman and Conforto and Jung Ho Lee. Solaire. Have all had Solaire and you know, three of the first three I mentioned, all getting off to hot starts already this year. That they have faced two very potent and dangerous offenses to start the season. Well, and you've given can up un- a buttload of runs too. Well, you can understand that that maybe, you know, you're not gonna face many tougher challenges than what you had in these first six games of the season. So if the ERA looks a little high and the bullpen looks a little shaky and the starters don't look great, let's remember who they had to face in the first six games of the year. Now, maybe the Giants will go back and do nothing offensively and they'll go, boy, you really gave up a lot of runs to that Giants team that didn't hit, but so far, so good for that Giants offense. They've come out uh, you know, and fairly been you know, impressive with the moves that they've made in the offseason. Yeah, and to, back to your original question, you know, am I concerned about Joe Musgrove? Yes, yes, I absolutely am. You're concerned about everyone yes. all the time, though. So. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> See, my answer is yes, absolutely. By the way, do you know who has scored the most runs in at Major League Baseball this year? Ooh, a little run differential. Talk do you know here? who has given up the, the most the runs Pots. in baseball this year? But there, there is. They've also played. <laughs> more games than almost every Two other more. team. Two more, more games than almost every other was, team. What was the final score? 15-11. Yeah, Padres are averaging seven and a half runs per game. Crushing it. Technically, technically, if you did that all season long, you would have the greatest offense in the history yeah. of baseball. Now, does it look like the Padres have the greatest offense in the history of baseball through six games? Because they're on pace for exactly that. I don't think so. I think there are still some concerns about the Padres' offense, despite technically being the greatest offense in the history of baseball so far this year. <laughs> What's our run differential right now? Plus four. Plus four. Which, if you if you'd like to extrapolate it out, oh yeah, let's oh, do God. that. I if they if they if they every six games are plus four, they'd end up better run differential oh. than last season wow. with a worse record. Amazing. <laughs> They'd end up 81 and 81 with like a plus 125 run difference. Yeah, you know what's so funny too is (laughs) is, out of this window safer. When you're talking about narratives that morons like us bring up, and 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 really the skipper the other night bringing up the narrative, oh, I love the fight late and all that. So now the every day is a different thing that we can look at and check off. How are they going to react today? After drubbing the crap out of a team Good point. 12 to 4. Because they did that a lot last they year. They did it a ton last year, which raised our run differential tremendously. And then they'd lose 2 to 1. 2 to 1. 3 one nothing. nothing. The yeah. next day. Yeah. Don't do that again. Do not. Don't do this. Well, today's tonight's game will tell me everything I need to know about the 2024 season. Kyle <laughs> See, Gibson. It won't, no. if, if you lose one nothing, will not. I will say, uh, you know what? It's the same old Padres. It absolutely will so not. So Kyle Gibson, decent veteran, but not not overpowering. Had like a 4.6 ERA last year. But Right-hander. Win a bunch of games. Um, you should be able to put some offense together. You should not be shut down by Kyle Gibson in the game tonight against the, the Cardinals. Now, Matt Waldron, don't know what they're going to get from him. You know, hopefully 
spring was fantastic. He was man. good this spring. Hopefully, he carries that over and gives the Padres a solid fifth starter performance today. Which, and you know, given you know being a knuckleballer, keep the Cardinals off balance, get into the sixth inning, that sort of thing is all I'm hoping for from Matt Waldron today. Okay. All right, that music means we, we need are. offense, though. The offense got to show up today after a drubbing yesterday. Halfway through Ben and Woods. Got a whole uh, whole mess of other games from Major League Baseball to talk about. Some basketball as well from the NCAA tournament. Coming up, Sammy as well in hour number three. Ben and Woods next on 97.3 The Fame.
All right, my friends, we are halfway home on a Monday. It is April 1st, the old dreaded April Fool's Day here on Ben and Woods. I probably your resident fool, Woodsy. That's Paul Rindle. He is probably your, the resident prankster. Are you the resident prankster? I yeah, was. I'd say so. I'd yeah. say so. And no, I'm not a fool or a I prankster, am, Ben Higgins. But I'm very gullible. Very gullible. Which makes April Fool's Day a nightmare for me. Still, at 48 years old. Yeah, I just do tend to be trusting and believing, so it's not in my nature to be skeptical of everything, and today you kind of have to be skeptical of everything, so I've never, never liked April Fool's Day. (laughs) I I really haven't either. I don't really like having pranks done on me, and I'm kind of overdoing pranks now. My kid, Bo, is so into it. He was conjuring up pranks all night last night that he's going to do today. So watch out, because that little weasel is coming after you today. Somehow, he's going to try to get me. Definitely going to try to get his mom. Definitely going to try to get his brother. Uh, but yeah, not my favorite. Uh, not my favorite day. And we're, you know, we're not allowed to do anything on the radio. Plus, you know, I, I, I don't think we prank you enough when it's not April Fools. That's good. That's a good point. You know what I mean? Yeah. April Fools is it's kind of obvious. Like we'll try to get you with the yeah, liner. Yeah, there was or like a fake liner in here. I think I'd be a little more on. A little more aware today than you know, it would be another day. Like Seymour Wiener was the guy uh, at the Met game the other so night. That was a real Milita- thing. The veteran, the veteran that they honored before the game. They did. That was real. That was real. And they, they did it over the loudspeaker. There's old Seymour Wiener just chilling there before the game. Seymour Wiener. Wiener. <laughs> Incredible. It's not Wiener. No, it's no. Wiener. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> and now, please stand to honor our veteran in the crowd, Seymour <laughs> Wiener. I was dead. Uh, and they had the graphic, and it's just him, like, he's like 100 years old. No idea where he is. It's like, come on, bro. That's the best you can do? Just doing bits? That was at the Met mm. game. Mets did not have a good... Did not have a good uh, start to their season. Our beloved Italian Paul is a Met fan, and I saw him going through it on Twitter. Um, some spiciness uh, in baseball this year with the Reese Hoskins, Jeff McNeil scene that happened, I believe, on Friday, and then they threw at Hoskins on Saturday. I did not have any problem with Reese's I slot. Didn't either. Straight into the bag. Yeah, he went all the way through, but... I mean, when I grew up, that was baseball. You're trying to take out the second well, baseman. You Not can't, necessarily hurt him, but make sure he doesn't complete the double play. You can't even take out a second baseman anymore. And McNeil... But he, that wasn't illegal he, either. No, it's I, not illegal. You can't, go, a, you can't right. go outside the baselines. you well, got to so, go straight in. But he went straight into the bag. Hard, straight into the bag. Now, McNeil's got to get off that plant foot, right? And he was going to turn the double play. And just he... I think and what, I, what I think happened is... He missed it on the transfer and then got mad because the, his cleats came up and didn't get him, uh, and he fell over. But they also showed McNeil going six feet out of the base pad last year and just barreling a guy. And it's like, all right, man, you know, you got to – if you're going to get mad about that one, you can't also do the same thing. Uh, but that got spicy. They did a um, – they, they threw behind him, um, and that pitcher is going to be suspended. Did you see Genesis Cabrera? Uh, for the Blue Jays, uh, there was a bunt given up. Guy came around on the overthrow and rounded the bag and kind of bumped into Genesis Cabrera. And you could see him be like, oh, my bad. And Cabrera kind of bowed up. Next thing you know, Cabrera grabs him by the face and like shoves him backwards. I'm like, wow. And what he is got happening? suspended, correct? Three games, yeah. 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 So it was a little spicy uh, for which, you know, I listen, I like the little chippy. I like chippy baseball. Um, so that was kind of fun to see. Uh, you had the uh, the Diamondbacks take three of four from the Rockies to start their season. They uh, look good, man. Yeah, I mean, Rockies did get one of the they one did. of the four. Tied for the but league lead in run differential. They are, way. yeah. They're not giving up a ton of runs. But is it point. because they're playing the Rockies? Yes. Yeah. Or is it real? Same thing with um, uh, the Tigers. They played the White Sox. They're undefeated. Them. Yeah. Pirates took four straight oh, from the Marlins. Tough start for Skip Schumacher. I'm so sorry if you're listening. And those are uh, of the four undefeated teams. We've got the the Tigers, the Brewers, who swept the Mets, as yep. you said, the um, Pirates, yeah, and, the and the now Yankees. the Yankees, who took maybe the most impressive start to the season, going into Houston, taking all four from the Astros, and in every single game, 
Juan Soto was the hero. Impact, Some way or another. impact player Juan Soto, <laughs> batting like 570, slugging. Defensively, offensively, yeah, whatever his you first need home from run. Him. Had the go-ahead RBI single in the ninth inning against Josh Hader Correct. in yesterday's game Super as the cool. Yankees completed the four-game sweep with a 4-3 win over the Houston Astros. So really good start to the season for Juan Soto with his new team. But, um, you know, I don't you know, I don't have any ill will toward yeah. Juan Soto at all. And it's the, the, the most common sentiment I saw was, why didn't you do that when you first got here? I mean, he got off to a... Don't we say that about... Sp- so many 95 percent of them so maybe it's not the players thing maybe it's us maybe it's a something something i don't maybe know what it is what are we us. doing wrong i don't know i don't know but I for whatever know. reason like players come much? here and forget how to hit they go what somewhere are we else doing wrong yeah. they're good i don't know like good hitters forget how to hit when they come here and then they go off and continue to hit good <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know tough, what it is it's a tough the load. the astros still they, their own ballpark is now in their heads Remember how they kept losing at home? Yeah. And now they are, are doing it. Uh, yeah. Now they're right. doing it again to start their season, and there's rumblings. Like, they don't like the batter's eye at Minute oh, Maid no. Park. It's and starting to spiral. It's already kind of getting in their heads. <laughs> you got to be a little concerned if you're an Astros fan at this point. Uh, maybe the big series, Phillies-Braves, giant NLE showdown to start the season. Phillies take two of three. Matt Strom got the win in relief yesterday, uh, 5-4, as the, the Phillies took that series. Uh, Angels already had a like a team meeting after two games they of the did. season. It's That's been a rough start. Never a good sign, yeah. but it did result in a win yesterday over the Orioles, four to one, to avoid a sweep. So you know sometimes those meetings do work. I think Ron Washington just wanted to say he said, "Don't let it spiral. Guys, relax. It's fine. No. It's two games. Don't don't get too worried. I know they were ugly, but." Uh, they're probably pretty happy just uh, getting one against the Baltimore Orioles I mean, in that series as well. The first headline on MLB.com, the very first headline is, Soto, the alpha dog, again, as Yankees stay perfect. And I'm sitting here going, is that the problem? Like, we just never let him be the alpha dog here? Because there's a lot of alpha dogs here. I just don't know that. The Aaron f- Judge isn't an alpha dog. I guess not. I mean, Apparently, he's had a rough start to the season, but... Um, Soto is, I mean, look, it's a walk year for him. It's massive. And, and yeah, he's he's doing what he's supposed to do, man. Certainly. Saw some uh, really, really questionable umpiring over the weekend as well. And, I mean, like, like, ball, like this. Ball's down the middle. Shoot. Ball. Max Freed got just completely robbed the other day. I mean, ball down the middle would have gotten him out of an inning. Of course, doesn't get him out of the inning. Some pretty egregious, egregious umpiring. I guess it's their... There, it's early for them too, Ben. I guess you could say. Uh, what did you think about Mike Winters joining the uh, broadcast crew? So I, I got the sense that yesterday was a bit of a uh, it was internship like a, day. Yeah, like yeah. Why don't you sit here and just observe how it's done? But it, it sounds like the Padres and Padres TV with Mud and Don do intend to like have him be the. Um, you know, like the the official in the booth, kind of like they do in the NFL, yes. where they have um, uh, what's his name, the the former official who's uh, it's uh, Ster- Gene Sterator, Sterator yeah. yeah, and they have him in the booth to to explain, you know, close calls and controversial decisions, so which I think it's great. It's a great. He's a local San Diegan, so retired. I would like to umpire. interview him. I would love to have him on. I would love to interview an umpire. I would assume that that could probably be made possible sometime soon. Maybe they want to debut him first on a broadcast officially but they were mostly just kind of poking fun at mud and maybe mike winter's ability to throw him out, throw of, the him game. out of the game yeah yeah no that's interesting to me but um, there's enough there's enough like infield fly roll there's enough you know interesting rulings in baseball that it probably does warrant having someone who's an expert and can give an umpire's perspective on what's going on. Hey, what are they looking at here on this replay? What's the, uh, I mean, what does the league tell you in, in terms of a ruling on this play, like on the infield fly? What are you supposed to call? What's your on problem? A situation? What's your problem? Why did he get, to, why, why is Angel Hernandez so bad? No, no, job? what's, what's your <laughs> problem? The collective, your, your what just is your, your problem? problem? What's your problem? Yeah, what's the problem? But I, I like the idea of having not a third man in the booth, no. but like you may have an entire game where you don't even yeah, go. Yeah, you don't use them. It's just not, it's not relevant. But you may have like a game where three times you need to go and get a, an explanation as to what's going on in the field. Because honestly, one of the things that baseball doesn't do well, 
the other sports do better now. Yeah, they don't explain explaining it. Explaining the rulings. They simply so they're just safe and like, okay, but why? And now you've got an umpire who can at least perhaps give some perspective as to why that decision was made. And in the NBA, they have to get on like the microphone at the scorer's table and announce it to the, the crowd and television that here's what was happening on that replay. We were reviewing it, and it turns out it was a common foul, and it's going to be two shots for the other team in the NFL they, they do a little bit better job of explaining it, depending on which referee is kind of going through it. Uh, if it's Ed Hockley, you know, he used to talk a lot. Others don't say quite as much. But the baseball umpires don't have a mic. They don't say anything at all. So now you've got someone potentially with a microphone who can give you some perspective on the rulings during a game. Well, and back to the umpiring, you know, the, the balls and strikes and stuff like that. Look, I, I'm not talking about the ones on the black. Those are those are tough, and it's a really hard job, and it gets harder every year. We've I've belabored this point for years. Why wouldn't you want a system that takes the worst part of your job, the worst, like the toughest part of the gig, and makes it easier for you? It, you can't let your ego stand in the way of that. And the way that they're doing it, the minors, Ben, you've seen it. So ball comes, Max Freed throws it, it goes down the middle. Clearly a strike. Catcher thinks it's strike. Pitcher thinks it's a strike. Nick Castellanos was on his way back to the dugout. He thought it was strike three. Calls the ball. All the catcher does is tap the top of his head. Boom. That's it. Challenge. Okay, we're going to look at it. Actually, strike three, Nick. <laughs> grab some wood. You know, grab some pine there, buddy. So that's that's really the best way to do it. If they're if they're working it out in the minor leagues, I would love to see that one uh, make its way to the big leagues. I thought, and it wasn't really brought up on the broadcast when I saw it yesterday, but the home plate umpire Edwin Moscoso in the Padres game had a pretty small strike zone. I mean, it helped the Padres on a couple of calls early as they were putting up their 12 runs, but it also hurt Michael King a little bit with his seven walks. I mean, he was not giving a lot of those edges on the side of the plate it was a tight strike zone which led to I, I think it benefited the Padres as much as it hurt Michael King I mean, they won the game 13 to 4 so no big complaints he just happened to have a tight strike zone and I think that was part of the reason why you know King struggled a little bit and you know kept falling behind on balls that looked like they were pretty good and just wasn't getting the calls but neither were the Giants pitchers so yeah, it was we, fair I feel like we got some too I feel like we definitely he definitely got some below the zone as well um, so yeah, it's just a, look, a tight zone. It's a zone. It's the zone. Like just keep the zone is the zone. And I understand what you're saying, but he was giving balls up, giving balls away, giving balls down. It's tough, tough sledding out there. Take the toughest part of your gig, get some help on it, make it a little easier on yourself. What a, what a load off that would be if you had to work the dish and you knew, Hey, if I get this wrong, we've got the eye in the sky and they can fix it. Now you don't want to slow these games down to a, a creeping halt, but, you know, employ some challenges and things like that. And at some point, It takes 15 seconds. At man. some point, they added instant replay to the NFL, and the referees, it's not like they just started calling everything terribly. Right. Just because, oh, well, you know, we got the backup right. cameras just in case. Like, they still did their job. Yeah, they was, still do their job. The umpires still are going to call balls and strikes, but when you miss an egregious one down the middle, I saw another one. Nick Pavetta had one. That was one of the just, worst calls I've ever seen. It was, it was terrible. I mean, it's right down the middle. We're not talking, <laughs> we're not talking, oh, man, he just nicked the black on that one, buddy. Sorry. This is like a huge man. moment in the game. Game-changing moment. 38 pitches he's at right now. He needs to get out of that inning. He throws the pitch to get him out of the inning. No. You think about egregious plays at like first base or something like bang bang play or whatever like even those weren't as bad. This was right was down the right middle. Right down the chute, man. They get fooled too. And it's okay. It's okay to get fooled, but have some backup. All right, when we come back, um we're going to give away some Padres Cardinals tickets for tomorrow night's game. Give you a chance to make some plans to join us for the 973 the fan City Connect Poncho Giveaway Night. I've got a Padres trivia question for you. Oh, the old trivia. The old trivia question for a chance to win tickets for tomorrow's game. And the Final Four is set. We haven't really talked about the NCAA tournament, the weekend games. Get into some of those as well. After a check of traffic, more Ben Woods on the way on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
How's your bracket look? How's Megan's bracket look, Polly? Uh, not as was good really before good. the Tennessee. I saw her tweeting yesterday. about the uh, Vols. Go Vols! But she uh, had them winning the whole thing. Yeah, that, and going into that game, she was number one in our in a large pool bracket. of like almost two hundred brackets. Very large bracket. <laughs> yeah. But it, it seems like if you don't have UConn, you're probably in trouble. We are down to the final four. Started at sixty eight. Four teams remain, had our Elite Eight games over the weekend. UConn, no trouble with Illinois. Well, they were only up five at the half. And then they went on a 30-30 run, which, you know, college basketball is is pretty much ball game when you go on a 30 30 30 I've never seen that before. It was 23 to 23 (laughs) at one point. And the next time Illinois scored, the score was 53 to 25. Um, The... (laughs) The Aztecs got a bit of grief for not being able to, you know, keep it a little closer with UConn. I didn't hear quite as much about Illinois not really belonging in the Elite Eight or the second weekend of the tournament, but I think UConn's just that good. They won 77-52. Alabama took out Clemson 89-82 to reach their first ever Final Four. Football school is now basketball school as well. As they get to the Final Four for the first time, UConn and Alabama will play in one national semifinal on Saturday. And then yesterday, you had NC State with a 76-64 win over Duke. What a run. That's incredible, man. For the Wolfpack. Now, last one. DJ Porter? Their big guy? Uh, No, not Porter. His His, uh, The big guy. What is it? Adams? I want to say can't just make up names. To he's the up. he's the big hoss out there. Big old dude. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, I saw him leading the team out. It was yeah, great. Yeah, he's uh he DJ Burns, Burns. DJ Burns Jr. God, he was is, fun to watch. He is a lot of fun. He Everyone is, not is your loving him. Typical basketball Mm-mm. player. He they just also looks have a DJ different. Horn on their team who, yeah. who scored twenty, but DJ Burns had twenty nine points. To lead NC State. Now, I think you know that they... He looks like guys I see at rec league. He yeah. looks like a rec league he does. player. They got into the tournament by winning the ACC tournament. But what a lot of people don't realize is they were not going to get in if they didn't win the ACC tournament. Right. They were going to the NIT or their season was over. And they got to the semifinals. And when they played Virginia, they were down like six late. And Virginia had free throws. They had... Free throws to ice the game. They missed five out of six, including with five seconds left. Virginia was up one and at the free throw line. And if they made that last free throw, NC State's season is over, but they missed it. NC State had three, forced overtime, won the game, won the next day, got into the tournament, and now have won four straight to get to the final four. They were a free throw by someone else that they could not control from their season having been over three weeks ago. And now here they are in the final four. It's got to be one of the most unlikely runs ever. Now, not totally a Cinderella because they're not a small school. No. Won a national championship, but it's their first final four since the – the great Jim Valvano yeah. running like a crazy the man best, around the court dude. in 1983. One of the, the, absolute the best. best moments in college basketball. And NC State is back. But what a day because the NC State women also advanced to the Final Four yesterday. They had two teams advancing to the Final Four on the very same day. So uh, Raleigh, North Carolina is the center of college basketball right now. And, of course, as Paulie said, really great game. Purdue, Tennessee, Zach Eady with 40. Dalton Connect with 37 for the Vols. Ultimately, though, the Boilermakers uh, get their get their revenge, get their uh, you know redemption after going out as a one seed against a 16 last year yep. and make it to the Final Four for the third time in school history with a 72-66 win. Zach Eady is seven foot four, and he knows how to play the game. I you mean, know, you I, see some tall guys that don't really know what they're doing out there. It seems like they're just there because well, they're seven feet tall. He is a beast, and I don't know how anybody can stop him at that college level. And I. Really think it's looking like a Purdue UConn championship, which would be fantastic. Which would be amazing to have Edie, the Player of the Year, going up against the team that everyone's talking about in UConn. But first, they got to get by NC State, and they certainly seem like they're a team of destiny. I was watching the the Purdue Tennessee game with my son, who watches more NBA basketball, and he asked me, "Is Zach Edie going to be like a star on the next level in the NBA?" And I couldn't. I couldn't 100% say for sure. I said he's definitely going to be a, 
a solid a player, a pro. He's, he's a good rebounder. Will he have, against the bigger guys in the NBA when there's other seven-footers, will he be able to dominate the way he does in college? Like, no. Is I, he going to be Giannis? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I don't think he's even going to be Wemby, but I do think he's going to have a role. I don't think he's going to be like a perennial all-star in the NBA. But if you've got a good team with, like, Good guards, you know, he'll be a nice addition to have underneath. I mean, but like both the Lopez brothers had good careers. Yeah. They were never yeah. They were and superstars I, I in see college, that for but... Zach Eady. He's very spicy. He was like, yeah, I can't tell you how many coaches came and recruited and looked at me and went, no, he's not for our program. And Purdue said, no, we want him, and they took him. And he has developed and turned into a player of the year, maybe a two-time player of the year. But, yeah, it'll be a Purdue against NC State, UConn-Alabama on the other side. I'm looking at the UConn-Alabama game. Now, UConn has not lost, or they haven't won a game by less than 15 points right. this entire All right. tournament. And they, 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 it feels like they're even getting better as they're going on. Right. They're, they're so 20, hot right now. 20, what, 30 over the Aztecs, I mean, 25 over NC State. And that was only because no. they pulled the er, – over um, Illinois. Illinois. And that was only because they pulled the starters pretty early. Yeah, I took them at eight-and-a-half-point favorites. And I'm like, that's the easiest money I think I've ever won. Yeah. And then they go on that thirty nothing run, and I'm looking at the line for Alabama UConn on was it Let me Saturday? Guess. Uh, you guess ten? No, more, more than ten. Eleven and a half. Eleven and a half. Eleven and a half. Okay. And I'm still like that seems like seems like a no brainer. Easy. Like, I'm, well, it's I too big. Ham- it's too big lines for. I mean, at this point, the, yeah, the t- last four games. at this point, you're, you're taking on a team that's won at least four consecutive yeah. NCAA tournament games. I mean, everyone you're playing is red hot right is now. Is Purdue blowing teams out as well? No, I mean they they were that. I mean they didn't blow out Tennessee. That was a game all N- the way to the N- end. NC State's not getting the. I mean, it's nine and a half. That's one seed versus eleven seed. I like I right like there. NC State to keep that one close. No one's giving NC State the credit. Because they're an 11 seed and because they had a pretty bad regular season, they're playing fantastic right now. Yeah, but five days between games, six I mean, games between. Remember, they lost. Six days. They lost to Duke in the regular season this month at the start of the month by like 10. Yeah, and now they're beating them by 12. This is just a different team. You can't evaluate NC State. Whatever they were in the regular season, they're a whole yeah, different team right now, and they're just so hot. I don't know that they'll win, but I like them. I like them to give Purdue a game. Uh, in that in that national semifinal, maybe the Edie's too much for them and has the answer, but I think that one's close. I don't think, I don't think Alabama can keep up with UConn either. I may watch. I may not. We'll it's Friday, see. Saturday, Saturday, okay. Saturday national semifinals. I may watch. And then we mentioned it earlier, but the uh, the women's final two elite eight games are tonight, and could be the most Ooh. watched women's college basketball games in the history of television at four o'clock. It's LSU against Iowa. Maybe just women's basketball. Maybe women's basketball, yeah. Angel Reese against Caitlin Clark. You've got uh, the whole... Um, Ooh, uh, the, Iowa minus two. The uh, uh, LSU coach. So the story came out about her. Was um, that the, the final story? Yeah. And it wasn't bad at all. It was a very balanced story. She was mad that they talked to like her estranged family members. I didn't, but wanna, I didn't want to give it was, Washington yeah, she, Post my email. She's spicy. She's, um, you know, she's controversial. So, you know, some players don't like her. There's some homophobia potentially in there but it was very balanced it also said she's an incredible coach some people absolutely love her she's won wherever she's been it was hardly a hit piece on kim mulkey it was very balanced journalistically responsible story that the washington post did that she came out last week hiring lawyers threatening to sue about what was a very reasonable story now there was also a column in the la times that everyone criticized that portrayed like ucla as Angels the and darlings. LSU's I players is one. like I think they called them dirty debutantes in the story, and everyone said that's that's ridiculous. That guy Don't, was getting dragged. Yeah, he was getting he got completely <laughs> dragged for that column, and she was she had moved on to that story as being the latest outrage right. when she was up in the media. But that will be a huge game, and then the second game, which is uh, UConn, the the college basketball. You know, for many years, the powerhouse with their uh, great star Paige Beckers against Juju Watkins and USC. Uh, she's also an unbelievable player that led the Trojans um, trying to lead them to the Final Four. Is so that game two, tonight as well? That's at 6 o'clock tonight. So you got the doubleheader. Obviously, we'll be probably watching some Padres, but you got two really great women's basketball games tonight if you're a college basketball fan. All right, as promised, we got some Padres Cardinals tickets to give away for tomorrow night's 97 3 The Fan City Connect Poncho giveaway night and uh, i got a trivia question for you so call in now 833-288-0973 paulie will take some callers at random first one with the correct answer to this will win the tickets 
Which Padre currently leads the team in both hits and runs batted in? Tied in both categories, but only one person is tops in both. Who is it? 833-288-0973. Call now for your chance to win Padres Cardinals tickets, and you can get your own. Go to Padres.com slash tickets uh, for your chance uh, to see and all the giveaways all season long. Coming up next, we'll let you know who won on 97.3 The Fan.
got in season Sammy, Sammy Levitt coming up here after traffic. I don't know whether he's going to be filling in for you or not on this week's roundtable when you're getting your stitches out. Yes. On Thursday, but you can tune in every Thursday at 10 a.m. for the 97.3 The Fans commercial free Padres roundtable featuring Ben and sometimes Woods, Annie and Elston, and Gwen and Chris, presented by San Diego Roundtable Pizza. For takeout or delivery, go to roundtablepizza.com. Roundtable, the last honest pizza. I, I mean, why was I the only one that got the sometimes? Well, you're not going to be there this week. Yeah, but some I was there the first one. That's true. Gwen has also been a sometimes. He's, a sometimes. Well, he's been a never so far. And Ello's been a never. That's true, because they were right. uh, yeah, traveling. Right. Annie and Elston were both there last Correct. time. Correct. I was there last time. Correct. So you can count on us. Sammy was in last Sammy time. Sammy was in. I don't in. know whether he's been asked or not this time. We'll get oh, to... I'm sure he will. Sammy, first I want to announce the winner of our Padres ticket giveaway and the uh, correct answer to the trivia question. Carlos knew it. Which Padres player leads the team in both hits and runs batted in? And the answer is... Jake Cronenworth, uh, who White is hot. tied with nine hits with Luis Camposano and tied with seven runs batted in with Manny Machado, but he's the only one with both the most hits and runs batted in. Really fantastic start to the season uh, for Jake, who is just scorching the ball. I mean, he is he's hitting it on a line, going both both ways. I mean, he looks like everything he didn't look like last season Extra so far. Hits. It's yeah. just <laughs> locked in. It's just that, that like, I, I don't know. Maybe Sammy's talked to him. I want to hear... Uh, what Sammy has to say about some of the guys he's talked to after these first few games. All right, we'll get to that right after a check at traffic on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danek. Traffic is sponsored by Valvoline Instant Drive Through Oil Change, a 15 minute instant drive through oil change. Well, our Cordell and Cordell traffic cams are picking up an accident on northbound 5, right at the eastbound 905 connector ramp. Other than that, though, things have been looking pretty good on our roads. Valvoline Instant Oil Change is your drive through oil change. It only takes 15 minutes, and you don't have to get out of your car with all the rain lately. Valvoline is also offering replacement wiper blades. For directions and discounts, go to SoCalOilChange.com. SoCalOilChange.com. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Well, hopefully if you were one of the 125,000 fans that made it to the opening series to the Padres and the Giants, you made your way to the loft in the Western Metal Supply Company building and said hello to Sam Levitt. He's going to be joining us uh, Mondays throughout the baseball season, in-season Sammy with us here on Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan. Sammy, good morning to you. How was your weekend? Good morning. My weekend was great. Great being back at the ballpark, seeing so many fans and having so many great conversations with people there. So really nice weekend. Good couple of wins for the Padres. And uh, thankfully, we got the games in, right? I mean, it looked for a while last week like there was no shot we were going to get the games in Saturday and Sunday. But great job by the grounds crew and the weather held off. And we we got them both in on Saturday and Sunday without any issues. So uh, good weekend all the way around. Now, see, Sammy, I was listening to your pregame the other day, and Jesse Agler commended you for not leading with the weather question. And you said, I'm learning. I'm learning. He, you, you brought up the weather towards the end of your, your interview with Jesse Agler, and today on Ben and Woods, you let off with the weather update, <laughs> which is interesting to me. You know, why did Jesse not want to hear the weather question right away? I, I don't know. Maybe is that a thing? Low, that, low-hanging fruit? Is it low-hanging fruit? Um, yeah, it's, it's a little, uh, it's a little low hanging fruit. Look, we, we typically, when I talk to Jesse and Tony pregame during the very start of my pregame show, typically if there's a weather situation that we know about, it is something I will address with them. I do tend to do that at the very start of our conversation, but to Jesse's point, I did hold off and get to the baseball first and then get to the weather. So and he liked that. With you guys, though, with you guys, I'm, I'm right in school. Well, I don't know. If, still, I'm, uh, if I'm listening to a pregame show, the most important thing to me, if I'm playing? on my way to the game, is are they going to be playing the right. game and is it going to be on time? So I think ask, you need to address that. I'm going to ask Agler about this tomorrow when he joins us, if that's like a thing that he learned in University we, of Miami. We should do a weather-related incorporator and, for him. Yes, yes, absolutely. First incorporator of the season uh, tomorrow. Sammy, yeah, I was. Uh, we kicked off the show this morning. I was saying, "Hey, listen, I'm not mad at the bookend wins. You know, the the win mm-hmm. on on Thursday night, so you get a happy show on Friday, and then the win on Sunday, you get a happy show on Monday, and those two right. games in between were, oh, they are what they are. Who even knows <laughs> if they were played? <laughs> I'm, you know, it's really it's all about us and how we're feeling. And uh, but it was nice to get that dub yesterday. What? Uh, who all did you have a chance to catch up with over the weekend? I'm curious. 
Yeah, I talked to Rand Pauly uh, quite a bit. Uh, you know, obviously we heard from Jackson Merrill a couple of times and Fernando and Manny. And look, I, I you know, I was, I'll focus on the young guys first. I, I thought Grand Pauly obviously had the really nice moment on Saturday and Jackson Merrill had a couple of nice moments in yesterday's game. And I think to this point with Merrill in particular, you know, he's done a nice job. He's collected some hits. He's played very good defense, very solid out there in center field, which is great. And he's done about what I think you would want him to do so far in the sense of holding his own at the plate, playing good defense and contributing towards the bottom of the lineup. And I, I think what continues to be really interesting when you hear guys like Paulie and Merrill talk, and even Xander Bogart yesterday, inside the clubhouse is A, the, the really close relationship that some of these young guys have and the way they want to contribute to this team, the way they view their roles on this team and inside a clubhouse that has a lot of veteran guys and stars. But also, um, you know, when you hear Xander talk about it, you know, you, you get a real sense of, of how important those guys can be. And the idea that, that I think that clubhouse understands that those guys need to contribute and they need to be a part of what this team does. And that really most good teams, they have young guys come up and contribute. And right now, for example, yesterday, the bottom of your lineup was, was made up of younger guys, yep. whether it's Camposano even, obviously Merrill and Pauly and Camposano, my goodness, has been terrific so far this year. So talking to some of the young guys, getting a sense for how they've been able to adjust over the last, handful of days and get their feet wet I, I think they've done a pretty good job so far and I think there's an understanding from the veteran players that they need to be be a part of this and they need contributions from those young guys really throughout the year and certainly in the beginning of the season as well it's got to be a, a group effort a team effort as cliche as that sounds and I think the good news and we can talk more about it is is I think you have seen especially offensively some some pretty good early indicators and signs that this offense is different than it was a year ago, which is good to see. Despite not sitting at five and one or four and two, you're sitting at three and three. But I do think the early signs have been pretty good. You know, it's um it's difficult to evaluate. Woods and I were talking about it earlier. They're averaging seven and a half runs per game, which is insane. Yeah. There's no way they're going to keep that up. But there also are still concerns about the offense and whether they could still use a, a Tommy Pham who's tweeting over the weekend, Crazy. just kind of still looking for a job. Brandon Belt is still out there, and I know Padres fans are still, you know, looking and seeing maybe someone out there is still available. Was there any, any rumblings at the ballpark this weekend about potential additions to the lineup still, Sammy? Uh, I, I didn't hear anything personally out of the ordinary. Uh, aside of my post-game show, I think Saturday night, we tur it turned into like a should the Padres sign Tommy Pham debate with like four phone calls uh, for about 10 minutes. But aside from that, I didn't hear a whole lot about it. I mean, look, I, I think obviously if the Padres were to go get another bat, and let's use Tommy Pham as an example – Obviously, it provides another veteran piece, another veteran bat, and it, and it would lengthen uh, this lineup. I, I think the, the good news early on, if we want to get out of the who could they add conversation, is the impact that Jake Cronenworth and Luis Camposano could make on lengthening this lineup yep. and making that top six and seven that much deeper and that much better. I mean, what a great start for Jake Cronenworth, right? I mean, a five-game hitting streak right now. He's 9 for 20 with four extra base hits and seven RBIs in his last five games. Luis Camposano, 9 for 19 with a home run in his last four games. And I continue to be super impressed with not just the power for Luis. We know he has power. But the approach. I mean, even yesterday, the home run, he hits it to the, the shortest part of the park. But you know what? That's what you got to do sometimes. And, and he continues to do something that we saw last year, and that's shorten up in situations. His approach is really, really impressive, and he doesn't strike out a lot at all. In fact, before yesterday, he struck out in his third plate appearance. He had not recorded a strikeout in 47 consecutive plate appearances going back to last year, which I don't know that people necessarily realize. So, you know, having those two guys perform it at these kinds of levels, I think, lengthens the lineup a lot. 
Um, look, obviously, an addition would do that as well. I did not hear anything in particular about that. Is it out of the question? Absolutely not. But for now, you got who you got, and if Camposano and Cronenworth can keep doing what they've been doing, if Bogarts can keep doing what he's been doing, Hassan Kim certainly now coming around, and you get what you think you're going to get from Manny and Fernando, um, all of a sudden you've ha- you've got a a top six seven that that's pretty deep, and then you hope you can get enough out of those final couple of spots in the lineup from some of the young guys. Talking to our pal uh, Sammy Levitt here on Ben and Woods this morning. Now, um, you know, we talked about Joe. He's had a couple of starts, neither of them really effective. Wanted to to ask you um, w- what you're hearing, you know, from what he said about what's kind of gone wrong with him so far. Yeah, look, I, I think the, the good news with the starting pitching in, in general, really two things. Number one, you know, they, they haven't had great starting pitching yet. Uh, starting pitching yet, right, whether it was King yesterday, whether it was Cease the day before. Look, I think, you know, to Joe's credit, he was able to work into the sixth inning the other night despite giving up three runs early, and that's what we've come to expect from Joe, right, is, is you know, even if he g- g- gives up some runs early, he, he has the ability to sort of settle in. And I thought for the most part um, on Friday night he did – settled in pretty well and, and was one out away from getting through six complete innings. But um, I, I think for all these guys, we need to keep in mind just how odd this schedule has been. And that's not to make excuses for them, but I do think it's a reasonable explanation for what's been for most of these guys so far, a pretty up and down start to the season. And in, in some cases, they've only had one start or one start uh, here in the U.S. In fact, everybody's had only one start in the U.S., but the early ramp up, then having a hop on the flight to Korea, how much that disrupted the normal flow of getting ready for a season, then having to pitch in games that counted, and then in some cases, guys then pitching in spring training games again, and then going back into real games here with all the travel, with kind of the disruption in, in a normal ramp up. I mean, you guys know this, you know, how pitchers get ready for a season is really particular. And this was a really different spring. So I I do think, even though obviously these games are important, we have to be a little patient with the rotation if the results aren't super, super great early on. Now, at some point, it's going to have to get better. But, you know, to this point, I'm not all that surprised that maybe things have been a little bit up and down. And, you know, Joe talked after the game uh, the other night, and, and I think he understands, you know, uh, some of the things that, that he needs to sharpen up. But I thought yesterday with Joe in particular, not yesterday, Friday with uh, Joe in particular, um, look, I, I thought he settled in pretty well, and he almost got through six innings, giving up four runs, yep. which is not a quote-unquote quality outing. But you know what? Uh, it kept you in the ball game at the time, and then the game kind of got away late. So, um, you know, look, I, I think whether it's Joe, whether it's Darvish, whether it's Cease, uh, really, anybody. I, I just think the the different nature of this build up to the season. I, I do think we've got to be a little patient and a little understanding of of what may be some some early ups and downs for what's obviously for the most part a, a, a very talented rotation. Catch Sam Levitt five forty today on the Eco Water SoCal Padres pregame show, and then after the game on the postgame show. Now, I'm, I'm, tonight is the drone show, right after the game. Okay. Has anyone ever seen one of these? drone light shows before i'm i'm fascinated by what this is going to look like no, I don't know sam are you going to be distracted during I, your post game show by well, the drone show <laughs> well I, ha- I don't have much information about it i have seen this before so i assume that that this is the coordinated drone show so basically it's drones that light up and uh I, well i don't want to say what it is because I'm, I'm not even sure that i'm describing it right because i have no part of the planning of this but when i've seen a a drone show before it's been basically like hundreds or thousands of drones all coordinated lit up and doing all kinds of stuff in the air to make images and and it's pretty cool I, i've seen it before and it it is pretty cool so um i i was not aware tonight was the drone show quite honestly until you told me but i uh if i can see it from the loft i will the the bad part is whenever there are fireworks even i know just with the fireworks i i don't see them because uh they're kind of off to my left and I, I can't see uh, through the building. So the fans enjoy him. I talk. 
I'm with you on the radio, and I hope everybody enjoys the drone show. And I'm looking forward to your first pitch tomorrow, which I did not know was happening. <laughs> talk about it until, much more. By the way, I mean, what a you, I can't believe you guys. I haven't heard it at least, and I didn't, I work for the station. I didn't know about this. So yeah. I can't yeah, believe you guys everybody. haven't it's, said anything about this. It's possible we're keeping it a bit on the DL, just because we don't like to what talk content. about it too much. Now I I have now I have like a little conspiracy in my head because Woodsy loves content, and there would be some good I would content never. if don't one do of it. you never. had a terrible first pitch. I would never. I can promise you it wouldn't come Mine from... Mine might be terrible, but it won't be on purpose. It won't be on purpose. I really <laughs> just want to hit okay. the mitt and get out yeah. of there. Head down, off the field as fast as possible. Yeah, I love content. I don't what like if... fake content. Okay. <sighs> what if you get booed? It's very possible. It's very possible. It's very possible. <laughs> yeah. After or before? If we get booed on the way out, I'm going to be a little disappointed. I, I'm not going to lie. If Petco Park just rises up and goes, God, I hate those guys, yeah. and loses us as that we happens. walk to the walk to the mound, I'm going to be a little sad and disappointed. If we no, throw I, a terrible I, I, pitch and we get booed, we deserve it. I, I think you're going to get a nice cheer. Okay. If, if, I have, if I know anything about the Tier 1s and 300 people showing up at 3 a.m. and you. Baja Ricks, I... I, I predict you will get a very nice hand, and I'm sure you guys will do just fine. I'm Tier 1s, uh, make some positive noise for us when we got there. Sammy, have a good show today. Thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you next Monday. All right, guys. Thanks. Uh, and we'll see him out at the ballpark, obviously, tomorrow when we are, yes, throwing out the ceremonial first pitch before the Padres Cardinals game. 97-3, the fan giveaway. It's, it's getting real. I am, a, I am a very patient fan, usually. Yes, I'd say so. I have a little impatience about one part of the Padres roster. Oh. I want to get it off my chest. Ooh. Polly's going to give us some uh, rival report headlines as well. Coming up next, final hour of Bennett Woods on the way on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
All right, I want to get something um, off my chest just, just briefly okay. about the Padres roster construction. Final hour of Ben and Woods here on 97.3 The Fan. Annie and Elston coming up at the top of the hour at 10 o'clock. Ryan will report incoming in a moment as well. I understand with Manny Machado still not playing third base and being the designated hitter that the Padres need some infield options and having Tyler Wade, Eggy Rosario, and Graham Pauly, who are all essentially third basemen, you know, I, I mean, I get that they can all play multiple positions, but right now they have three rotating third basemen in their lineup. It's not the most efficient use of your 26-man roster. And I would hope that as Manny gets healthier and gets back into the lineup, I would like to see... I would like to see a lineup in which perhaps Luis Camposano is going to be the DH on days that he's not catching. Now, I know that's tough because you want to get catchers as much time off as possible. It's the the most rigorous job. But they're going to need more production out of their backup catcher. Now, Kyle Gashioka's has only played once. I'm not, I'm not saying that Kyle's not the answer for the Padres, but I did see that Brett Sullivan went like 5 for 5 in his first game at El Paso after having a really good spring. I would rather have three catchers, including Brett Sullivan, probably as your depth right now on the 26-man roster, giving you more flexibility to use a guy like Camposano and not wear him out behind the plate every day. He's been one of your best hitters. He has your best OPS so far. Granted, it's through six games, but we were just talking with Sammy. He was talking about Camposano. When we were at spring training, I think Jesse said off the air to us, I'm expecting maybe a big season from Campy, yep. and he's off to a great start. You want to get the most out of Luis Camposano, you can. And that, that means you might not be able to catch him 120 <laughs> games because you want him at the plate as much as possible. So I think you need as much depth at catcher as you can get this season so you can get other guys behind the plate and keep Campy's bat in the lineup as much as possible. Now, you know, the again, only, you can't do it much with Manny DHing right now. The only, the only problem that I would foresee is... Tyler Wade's a lefty. Grand Pauly's a lefty. Eggie's a righty. If you're going to platoon there, I, you're just going to have to let, you know, it, it, the other thing I've heard is that Pauly's glove is not solid. True. And, and the only, he had a couple uh, of opportunities yesterday, made the grounder, the line drive snuck up on him. He did make the play. The throw to third base for a tag was Hosmer-esque at that point. But, um, yeah, I just heard that that's going to be a little bit of a, you know, a tough, tough run for him at third base. Who do you send down? Do you send down Eggy? Do you send well, down Well, probably Tyler right Wade? now because I want to keep at least one lefty. I'd probably send down either Wade or Pauly. So you have a lefty and a righty option at third base. Yeah, then I'm, I'm – and, and, again, I'm not in a hurry because I can't do much of this until Manny's – out of the DH spot, but you could put Campy at first base against lefties to give Jake a day every once in a while and, you know, have him work in. He did that. Didn't he do that Pauly? once or twice? No, uh, Capisano. Put at him first at first. Base. Yeah, against uh, against a lefty to give, give Jake a day off. I know Jake's hot right now, but every once in a while you give him a day off. Or if there's a righty, you can give Kim or Xander a day off and have Jake play up the middle and have Campy still bat in the lineup at, at first base. I Am I totally crazy? Didn't Campy play once or twice at first last I think season he might to keep have. his bat in the lineup? Jeffrey says, is it any worse than Muncie at third for Pauly? No, but Graham Pauly's not Max Muncie with the stick just yet. I mean, Max Muncie, I mean, you saw what he did last night. Turned around a lefty, yacked it out of the yard. His defense is absolutely atrocious. Um, but, yeah, you if you if Graham Pauly was Max Muncie offensively, who cares? Like again, throw I, him out there. I, I recognize. I yet. recognize this is a very impatient take. It just is. six games it's into right. the season, and I don't think you're going to make a, a ton. Pisano of... has never played first base. They've never first. put him in at first base. All right. He's never played anywhere other than catcher. All right. Well, I'm just just throwing out some ideas out there because I want to make sure. So you need a you need that third gets catcher his, gets his bat in the lineup you need as that, much as possible. You need that third catcher because you know. It just it's tough because you want you do want Campy in the lineup as much as you can as as good of abs as he's putting together and again the lack of strikeout that Sammy Levitt was just talking about I did not know that that's a that's a really good that's what you want in yeah. your lineup guys that make contact yeah and okay. unfortunately as your everyday catcher it also means forty some odd games you're not going to have him in the lineup at all unless you can find a, another way to use him or you can get you know more production out of one of your two 
backup catchers. Because so, Sully can play first too. They're, they were yeah. working him out. Yeah, they at, were at working first. him so at first. He may be a better fit, you know, altogether. But I don't know. I mean, Eggy Rosario did have that late home run. You know, he's got some pop in his bat. Had a really bad, really bad base running mistake. Uh, but again, it comes after a double that he rips in the gap. So I don't know, man. It's um, it's it's pretty tough to uh, it's pretty tough to look at. Yeah, and, and many people are saying you'd think we could get Belt and Fam for less than twelve million. I think Brandon Belt and Tommy Fam would sign. You know, today I, they there were comments over the weekend. Brandon Belt talking about how he was actually blown away um, that he hasn't had any offers yet. It's crazy. No offers. I mean, really nothing. I mean, I Tommy. Mean, we we've heard. I think I think the Padres have at least had discussions. They've had with discussions him. with him. Yeah, I might imagine other teams have as well. He just hasn't gotten what he's yeah. thinks he's worth at this point. But at some point, you you want to take something. It's better than sitting out a season and making nothing. Whatever. Like, now that the season's going, like it feels like at least every week, almost feels like every game that number is dropping. Right. Yeah, I would imagine. Tommy I, I would think so. Yeah, because I mean, you're a baseball player. You want to play, be playing baseball. Yeah. Now you just say, well, well. Make you the same offer at least, and you know we'll forget about the week you didn't play and just pay you what we were offering you. Now it's like free money for you at this point. But he's not going to be making more the longer he sits out. That, that, that doesn't seem longer, like that's yeah. that's going to be on a t- on the table. So we'll see. All right, that's my impatient take. Now let's get to uh, Paulie's Randall report and get things started here with our. Edition today's edition oh, of boy. the Randall report. Now tune into the month greatest. Welcome to the Rindle Report with Paul Rindle. Hi, Paul. All right. Two stories from the world of sports that we haven't gotten to yet. We'll start off in Major League Baseball. And one story that you didn't know you needed. Are you laughing, Biot? It's the Rindle Report. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Okay, how are you? On 97.3 The Fan. Are you ready to bless the mood? I need some help, please. <laughs> that was good. Can I get a hoist? All right. All right. Gentlemen, we will start off uh, with Gentlemen. a story. <laughs> Gentlemen? 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 Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Uh, we'll start off with a story that probably could have easily been and don't do this, but we had plenty of stories to choose from this morning. And that is uh, the story in the NFL about Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Rice. Oh, oh my goodness. A uh, lot of no-nos in this story. First of all, got... And involved in an accident for uh, street racing in the yep. middle, middle of the morning, I think it was. No, there was a Corvette and a Lamborghini. Evening. Evening. Which one was his? Uh, I believe he was in At the... At least registered to him. I believe the vet was registered to him. I he, he's got the vet because it was a vet and a yeah, Lamborghini Chevy that were street racing and there was an accident and some people got hurt and the... The vet took off, and they don't know who necessarily was in it, but they know that it was registered Corvette. to doesn't, Rasheed Rice. It doesn't say for okay. sure. But, yeah, involved in a street racing accident on a freeway, and there was – did you guys see the it dash cam? It was 6.25 p.m. Yeah. on Saturday. Yes. And did you see the dash cam video of one of the cars on the freeway? I just saw one, like, slide into – Yeah, you can see the guys that get out of the car, and then they just start kind of taking off. It's a good move. And, they won't get uh, you. To my knowledge, so they have everything... people injured. They already know who like some of the people are. You think the cops aren't going to figure out? Yeah, well, they're, st- they're still <laughs> the looking for him. Who's involved in this? As of this moment, I mean, I checked uh, not too long ago. Police are still looking for Rishi Rice. They have not found him. He's somewhere in the Dallas area, they believe still. But what does knows? he think is going to happen if he just lays low long enough? They're going to forget about it. And he shows up at training camp. What? Ready to go? <laughs> Hello? What? No. What me? You've been looking for me? I had no idea. If you're in a vet, <laughs> do you even try to race a Lambo? That's the other question I have. Doesn't a Lambo smoke a vet? It's probably not important, but I mean, maybe if it's souped up the vet a little bit. People it's a are going Lamborghini. People are going. People call a Corvette a vet. Yes. Yeah. People call a Corvette a vet. A hundred years. Yeah. A vet. I prefer a fuel efficient, economical vehicle. Hmm. I don't understand this. I mean, there's so many cautionary tales uh, about. I mean, Henry Ruggs was a pretty big one. And yeah. if you're an NFL, yeah. if you're an NFL player and you're like, you want to you want to race your car, find a track, <laughs> do it under the guy, you know, do it under the professional watchful. By the eye. way, I don't think your team wants you to be even Correct. doing it legally. Correct. Correct. I don't know, man. It's tough. Yeah. No, no. So he's toast. He's in trouble, I think. Yeah. 
Somebody going to take the fall for him? Be like, ah, oh, no, I was driving his car. <laughs> I mean, they got him on camera. I don't know. It sucks, dude. I'm glad nobody died. It was tough to see in the video, the dash cam video. I don't or know if there was, it was any more. It was tough to see exactly who was driving or who, like, if he was one of them or not. It was a little bit far and from behind, but still not something you want your to be even involved with in any way. All right. Next up, we spent uh, a few minutes in our last hour talking about <laughs> our old pal Juan Soto. Very good weekend for the New York Yankees. Having a nice start. Yeah, yeah I'd say so. But uh, have you heard the John Sterling call of oh, Juan Soto's home run? No, I have We not like yet. John Sterling I calls. I do love John Sterling. It's very John Sterling y. All Here right, we go. Ask. And the pitch hit in the air down the left field line toward the wall. It's gone. It went over the high wall. Juan Soto's first home run as a Yankee. A fly ball down the left field line. There is a Soto photo, a home run in the left field seats. He's wonderful, <laughs> marvelous. <laughs> and the Yankees have now taken a 4-3 lead. Yeah, he's wonderful. A Soto photo. So it's like a double. Yeah. Soto yeah. photo, and then he's wonderful. wonderful. <laughs> it's fantastic. John Sterling's just the he's the How old is he now? He's wonderful. No, like, really. <laughs> Marvelous. <Who knows? laughs> 85 <laughs> years old. Still out there getting it, dude. Can I play? Still working on Yankees. Anytime broadcast. we bring up John Sterling's You have name, to play it. I have to play it, right? Yeah. So let me pull it up real quickly. John Sterling. Um, we had John Sterling on the show. We did? This was, oh God, three or four years ago now probably? I thought it was at the Maybe last station. No, I think it was here. When he was still a young man of around 80. 80 yeah. 81. I mean, this maybe. might have been 2019 yeah. for all we know. And uh, so I reached out to John Sterling, texted him, and um, he called me. This was, yeah, 2019. So he called me, and I guess I missed it. I don't remember what I was doing, but I missed the call entirely. And he left me a voicemail. It's only 30 seconds long. It's unbelievable. It's fantastic. If you haven't heard this, this is Yankees legendary broadcaster, John Sterling. <laughs> I still have the the voicemail <laughs> saved on my phone. Of course. Yeah, Paul, this is John Sterling. Um, it is 12, I don't know, let's say it's 1230 on, uh, on Wednesday yeah. afternoon in New York. So it's 1030 your time. Nope. No, it would be 930 right. your time, yes. please. <laughs> My math was not my strong subject. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Give me a call when you want me on the air. I'd be glad to do it for you. I'd love it, as a matter of fact. So at some point, you know, I'll give it. I'll be home late afternoon. Okay. All right. And uh, or tomorrow all afternoon. Okay. So good. just give a call. Thanks. Uh, oh, it's so good. <laughs> uh, tomorrow or may. Oh, no. Might have an appointment. No, I should be oh, there. God. It's. I love when you're. You can hear him working it out in his head. 10.30. No. No. Actually, 9.30. Three hours. New York City. Uh, three hours. Time. Nine, 9.30. But so the good. voice. The voice is the voice so, so good. good. Yeah, Paul, this is John Sterling. God, listen to those pipes. Unbelievable. <laughs> Kills me every single time. So great. So good. All right. And then finally, I can't believe this is real but actually i can kind of believe this is real i love when uh there's new trends out there they usually come from tiktok and i got a new one here for you guys that i'm actually on board with i think tiktokers discover showering <laughs> yes it's incredible <laughs> we shower so uh i don't know how you guys feel about online gift registries some people are um Big you got fan. the baby shower, yeah. wedding. And then you have the ba- do you have the birth of the baby? Yeah. You have the wedding. Do you have an anniversary? Like, there's a lot of different occasions to sure. give out gifts nowadays. And I guess there is a new trend of people posting online registries, links to their online registry, for them getting divorced. It's fantastic because you need a lot of stuff when you move out. Probably strapped for cash. You do, but do you deserve it? Well, like, is I that, mean, is that an occasion? Do you deserve it for should... having a baby? Do you deserve stuff for getting engaged? Congratulations. Yeah, congrats. Everybody gets married. Everyone gets engaged. Congrats. Here's a Cuisinart. Here's a toaster. <laughs> like, yeah, here's a toaster. You need 14 I feel like boards. it's just as, like, if one of my friends got divorced, I would say, well, what do you need? Because I know you ain't getting anything. 
What are you starting with? You're almost more likely to help to go to that registry then two than people any combining of the all of their stuff together. Like, you already I, have a I bunch of stuff. I guess it's your birthday. Forget your ba- bridal shower. Yeah, from I'm a, more big shower. To help from a logistics Logistically, standpoint, it does actually make more sense. From a celebratory standpoint, it makes less sense. Uh, depends. <laughs> depends on depends on the people. Depends on what uh, they're getting out of. It says here, some people think it's a great idea and argue it's even more helpful than providing newly married couples with stuff since they may have already have two things. 100%. Two version, you know, you I've get, got a cutting board, you've got a cutting bro, board. You don't need to. When you get married, I mean, Hannah took all my stuff and was like, yeah. so if she booted me today, I would have nothing. <laughs> I don't have a bed. I don't have a couch. I don't have a cup. I'd have a hell of a lot of Padres. I got, I got, I'll got. i sleep on piles of records. I get the bobbleheads. I've got guitars that would be strewn about my house. I don't have a chair. I don't have a television. You'd be I like uh, Peter Seidler and Eric Katsenda's first house. Yeah. have nothing but a drum set. That's it. I would have guitars around a, rec- a couple of record players. I don't have a desk. We no. share a desk. I would not have a, ch- a pot to pee in. Really? I mean, so that I would be a huge benef- benefactor of a divorce registry. Now, those that are not in fans of the uh, not fans of this are saying that look, you know, we got you an engagement gift. We got you a wedding yeah, gift. Yeah, guess what? She's keeping if it. If you had kids, we got the kids. You guess got what? You They're kid, keeping it. Gift. What did I get out of the whole deal? Well, do you have to register together for the divorce no, registry as well? No, all single. So this now, what separate. if you're friends with both of them? You have to get them both gifts now? If they both have if registers. If they both register. If they both register, well, you have no, to get two gifts, a, separate gifts no, for each one of them? usually in a divorce. Has anybody ever maintained friendships with both sides very, of a divorce? Very rare. Right? Very rare. Gotta be. Very. Very. It's your friends and their Has friends. Has anyone ever been friends with one person... Then they got married, and then they got divorced, and you decided to go with the, the other, other person I think out it of the divorce. I think it does happen. I mean, I, when I think about it, I would not have anything. I wouldn't have a blanket, a pillow, nothing. I'd have my clothes, my car, some records, some guitars, some sports stuff, sporting good tees <laughs> and t-ball bags. No, I would have not, not a plate, not a cup. Not a coffee machine. Who nothing. keeps your eco water SoCal I, home see, water now system? Now that's installed in the house. <laughs> I'm in there ripping it out, dragging <laughs> it along with me to my one bedroom apartment. I'm telling you, taking this GD eco water with me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is mine. These are my pipes. She would take me to the cleaners. You wouldn't be able to get it out though, because I'm assuming you, you don't see have that a lot couch of tools. out there in the lobby. You're sleeping. That there. would be my house for about three months as I got my finances in order. You guys, I'm serious. When I say I would have nothing, I would have nothing. Yeah. First, I kind of laughed at that headline, and then I go, you know what? That might be genius. I'm doing it. <laughs> if she does this, I'm doing this. <laughs> if any of my friends go through a divorce, just let me know. I got start you. a registry. Plates, cups, yeah. knives, forks. <laughs> I, I would eat takeout every day and eat plastic spoons the whole bit. I'd be the guy saving all the condiments. All of it be be a nightmare. <sighs> Ronald Report, Thank well you, done. Polly. All right, uh, we're going to take a time out. By the way, I got an update for you on uh, the Padres AAA affiliate, which if the, the, the AAA, what are the Pacific Coast League? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Uh, we'll come back. Yeah, is and it a good indicator of where got, guys uh, are at? Eric Clapton tickets to give away as well when we return with Ben Woods after traffic here on 97 through the fans.
Do the Padres and uh, maybe some other West Coast teams have a triple A problem? I mean, we've talked about it for a few years, but the altitudes and thin air of the PCL (laughs) continues to really play havoc, especially with pitching prospects. Plus, it's no fun for the hitting prospects who have these inflated numbers, and then they get to the big leagues, and it's like, well, this isn't anything like what I was just experiencing with El Paso. Like yesterday, the, uh, the El Paso Chihuahuas took on the Albuquerque Isotopes, and the teams combined for 14 runs in the ninth inning alone oh. with El Paso's eight-run top half of the ninth holding on for a 16-15 win. Uh, Cal Mitchell, four for five. They had 33 <laughs> hits in the game. Uh, Brett Sullivan, homer, he's got a 14-30 OPS. That's why I got to bring this guy up. He's the greatest minor <laughs> league hitter in the history of minor league hitters. I know that once you bring him up, those numbers are not going to look anything like it, but it's just as bad for the pitchers. Uh, Alec Jacob, six unearned runs in the ninth inning allowed. Oh, my God. I mean, you're just going to lose all your confidence when you go there. Six unearned? Unearned runs. I mean, it doesn't hurt the ERA, but it's still six runs and couldn't get out of the frame without having to uh, surrender himself to Austin Davis, who struck out the only battery face to get that fit save in the 16 15 win for the chihuahuas imagine getting to the big leagues and you're like whoo and now i just have to navigate the cardinals tonight and not the thin air of of el paso um yeah man i i you know i don't know what you i can... mean we saw it with avila he, yeah he was horrible waldron was terrible in triple a yeah. they come into the big leagues and settle in decent serviceable pitchers in the big leagues but how are you ever going to figure out who's good and who's not good when they're constantly playing in these environments that aren't really suitable for baseball. Yeah, I mean, and the offense is the one that, you know, the offense is where you you look at it and go, well, he is clearly a monster. And, I mean, we've seen Brett Sullivan at the big league level. I love Brett Sullivan. He's a great dude. That being said, I don't think he's going to come up here in OPS 1,400. I would bet the farm that he's not. <laughs> you know, that, you put him into every day. Take half of that and be kind of happy. In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. <laughs> From a backup catcher, oh 710 OPS. God. I'll sign up for that right now. Is he hitting balls out of the yard? Yes, yeah, <laughs> take that all day. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I, I don't know what you do. It's a... It is an interesting. It's an interesting conundrum, and it, this is what where we are. But uh, it it makes the Padres think twice about where they're sending the minor leaguers. And we saw this morning uh, that they have assigned more minor leaguers to lower levels, which get their season started on Friday, including Ethan Salas, who's actually taking a little bit of a step back. He finished last year at Double A, but he's going to start this season at high Single A. Go back to the uh, Fort Wayne Ten Caps to at least begin this year which i think, I think is smart is the right spot for a guy who's still 17 years old won't be 18 i believe until later this summer so certainly nothing wrong with being in high single a for uh, ethan salas no. and uh, and i have no problem that he got a little bit of experience at double a at the end of last year no no whatsoever and uh, he shouldn't look at this as a demotion of any sort it's just part of the uh Part of the progression of learning to eventually get to the big leagues. Yeah, I'm not too worried about uh, him, Ben, and based on everything that we've heard from every person in the organization and then what we've seen with our own eyes, yeah, I mean, this is just this is just what you do. So I, I'm assuming he's probably going to jump up the ranks this year. You know, you'll probably see him back at double A, and we'll see how that works from him or for him. And uh, But yeah, let, certainly let no the, hurry. Let the performance dictate. Yeah. And don't be in a rush. You know, if he has a good first week, he doesn't need to come right up to double A. But if he has a good first half of the season, then yeah, absolutely. The second half could be spent at double A San Antonio if he has a good first half of the season. But let him, let him thrive a little bit somewhere for a while. Don't constantly be... Just adding to the challenge level every second. It's good. Good to get some confidence. Maybe, you know, start beating up on guys as you're seeing the ball really well and dominating a level before you move up. It's the old Earl Woods style of uh, parenting, or in this case, developing. Uh, Earl Woods, when Tiger was a little kid, when he was, I think he said he was 10, and he could have been playing up with 15, 16 year olds. And Earl said, no, I want him. I want him beating the ever-loving crap out of the 10-year-olds. Winning tournaments by 15, 16, 17 strokes. A lot of them here in San Diego at the <laughs> Junior World. And then and then he's going to go 
to what age is appropriate for him. Could he have beat 20-year-olds when he was 10 or 11? Probably. In that case, send Ethan Salas back to senior level of high school and I'll see t- how he does this year. I'll I take bet, him on the... he do quite well. I'll take him on the Encinitas Little League bats <laughs> right now and watch him just murder. Bet uh, he'd do quite well No, it's, uh, it's playing just a, for any high school team in San Diego this season. Bro, it's a really interesting... It's an interesting philosophy. It, it, you want him to be exploding out of high single A. You want him to be like, oh, wow, this is clearly, clearly, clearly not not where he needs to be. That's what you want to see from your prospects, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, good for him. It's going to be fun to watch his progress. All right, so we've got the St. Louis Cardinals coming to town. Take a look ahead at the upcoming series for the Padres in our final segment. Before that, though, we do have uh, another pair of tickets to give away. This time it is to Eric Clapton at Pachanga Arena on October 8th. Tickets go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. at AXS.com. But be the fourth caller, 833-288-0973. You can win those tickets right now from Ben and Woods. We'll be back with a little more Padres talk to wrap things up on a Monday on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Congratulations to Katie. It was very excited to win those Eric Clapton tickets. I believe we'll have more to give away throughout the week, so stay tuned to Ben and Woods. Want to get into the upcoming series, though. Padres Cardinals beginning tonight at Petco Park, and we'll do that right after a check of traffic here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Traffic is sponsored by Robert Half. Got a few problems wrapping up our morning drive. Stalled car in the slow lane, southbound 15 past El Norte Parkway. Also traveling on eastbound King Freeway right around Euclid. We have reports of some debris in middle lanes. And got a vehicle fire on the H Street off-ramp, southbound 5. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Robert Half Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having difficulty hiring. Robert Half is here to help. Our recruiting professionals use proprietary AI to connect businesses with highly skilled talent. At Robert Half, we know talent. Visit roberthalf.com today. So first of all, a little programming note. We will get a more in-depth look at this week's opponent, the St. Louis Cardinals, tomorrow morning here on Ben and Woods when we will be joined in studio by the Athletics Katie Wu, one of our favorites. Polly, what's the uh, time frame on Katie's visit tomorrow? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Let you know. All right, we will find out. Uh, Katie got a mention on Sunday Night Baseball yeah, last night. Ravage. For uh, her great work that she's been doing covering the team, as she always does. She crushes it. She was also interacting with a lot of her followers who were just up in arms about uh, Ollie Marmol's bullpen usage against the Dodgers, especially on Sunday Night Baseball. And she was just pointing out they had a lot of guys unavailable their bullpen was taxed by a four-game series against well a very formidable Dodgers lineup and, and, and I watched a lot of those games uh because again they were on Dodger fans don't flip out I watch a lot of baseball they were so mad at me this weekend man they were mad at me they were they get so mad that I watch the games and we that we talk about them on our show um but I, why wouldn't you Right? I mean, there were some good games, really They're interesting. A key team in Major League Ooh, yeah, Baseball. Win or lose, succeed or fail. Of course. I mean, big storyline in baseball this year. I mean, they get they get mad when we rip on them. get mad when we watch. Just relax out there, man. We're all friends. Um, Ryan Helsley came in the other night. Their, their closer that throws really, really hard. And he... He served it up, and you're watching this Dodger team, Ben, grind grind out abs, and they made they belabored the point last night that they're truly never out of a ball game. How could you possibly be when you run that lineup out there? Now, the seven hundred million dollar man Shohei has actually gotten off to maybe the worst start, but Mookie Betts is the hottest guy in baseball. They kept him, I think, a little under control last night. Uh, we're able to get him out a couple times, but. They kind of burned their bullpen to get their victory, and then they had a two-run lead uh, or a one-run lead last night. Or four nothing. They four were nothing. Up, yeah, and then the they, seventh it was four to two, and then going into the eighth, it was four to two. Teoscar Hernandez hit a, hit a solo shot to make it four to three, and then later in the inning, with a man on, Max Muncie hit a two-run shot to give the Dodgers what turned out to be a 5-4 win. Yeah, I mean, they're they're a swing away from being 500 as well, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Had they lost that game, they would have split that series with, with St. Louis. And, um, yeah, I mean, they. but what they did is they grinded out so many ABs, got into their bullpen. He had to make some moves he probably did not want to make uh, yesterday in Ali Marmol. But that just means <clears throat> Helsley's fresh. He's ready for tonight. You don't want to get to him. He's pretty nasty. Um and, you know, other than that, like, their bullpen, they're gettable. Well, this is – tonight's game is very key in that if you can get to Kyle Gibson early yes. and force the Cardinals into their bullpen early, they're already they're taxed. in a bit of a, a world of hurt. So if you can, in the first game of a series, get in and make them use three or four more relievers, I mean, yeah, they can always save Helsley if they have a save situation, sure. but they can't save everybody, and they're going to have to use guys. So – what they're hoping for is that Gibson can give them at least like six, maybe into the seventh tonight, and give the bullpen as much of a rest as possible. And the Padres want the opposite. They want to force Ollie Mormol to get into that pen early. And then uh, it's Matt Waldron tonight. And then the second uh, and third game of the series, Miles Michaelis, who got roughed up by the Dodgers in his first start, will go against Hugh Darvish. And then Wednesday, day game, Zach Thompson against Joe Musgrove. You'll be in better shape for the second and third games of the series if you can get into their bullpen tonight knowing that they're already coming in taxed and fatigued from the first four-game series against the Dodgers. Yeah, you want to... 
you want to stick it to Kyle Gibson tonight. I mean, he's their fifth starter for a reason. Now, solid I, fifth starter. I was surpri- I'm surprised, uh, honestly, that he's their fifth starter. I mean, pitches innings. Matts was great last night. Matt's, and he was. Steven yeah, Matt's you'll was miss Max, who was yeah. who gave him their best start of the year Fantastic. so far. So you'll miss him in this series. Um, but Kyle Gibson's a guy you can absolutely get to. And that's what you need to do. You need to be aggressive, and you need to go up there, and you need to try to score a few runs early off him and keep the foot down. You want to do that every game. I understand that that's Captain Obvious, but um, this sets you up nicely if you can go out and and have another one of those laughers tonight. And it will be interesting. We talked earlier in the show about we've seen many a Padres blowout followed by you know a 2-1 loss and an inept offense. So I want to see how they react. And how about for the skipper, Mike Schilt? Opens the season in Korea against the hated Dodgers. Comes right back. He's got to face Bob Melvin, who was the, you know, the guy he replaced. And now he's going up against his old team uh, in the St. Louis Cardinals, who let him go uh, after he had been pretty successful. And they went with Ollie Marmol. So you don't tell me that this, this series isn't a little bit special for Shilty out there. You know he wants to take it to these guys. Yeah, I know. Katie, Katie tweeted, next up, Padres and former manager Mike Schilt going to be there. So, obviously, the Cardinals are, are thinking a lot about this series, and it's a big one. And I think it was um, it was good the Padres were able to get both of those games in this weekend, obviously, because yeah. now they get a Thursday off day. Had they, had they both been rained out, there was a chance they would have made the Giants come back on Thursday. They were actually talking about that. I suggested it last week, and apparently it was – being discussed, but now the Padres will definitely get Thursday off, and then they'll go to San Francisco for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, the uh, probables for Friday would be Dylan Cease and Jordan Hicks, so a rematch of the Saturday game at Petco Park. The Giants, at least here on the ESPN website, have listed undecided for their Saturday and Sunday games. Michael King, uh, Matt Walter, enlisted for the Padres. I saw in what whether it was his daily or somewhere that Kevin AC wrote that Blake Snell is not expected to face the Padres again, even though undecided seems like it leaves open the possibility that they could bring him back. I'm not exactly sure what his throwing schedule is, how he looked in his his Friday workout that he was supposed to do last week, but I'm not sure, at least uh, from what I've read, that we will see Blake Snell in either of these two series against the Giants. And remember, after this week. Padres will have played more than half of their games against the Giants for the whole season. They'll only have, I think, six left the entire remainder of the year. So there's, you know, more than a, there's a coin flips chance. You may never even face Blake yeah. Snell this year, depending on how their rotation stacks up the next two times that you face him. If you happen to, you know, hit it on days where he's already pitched just before or just after the series, who knows if you'll even get a chance to go up against Blake Snell this season. And, Quite frankly, I don't. I don't mind them missing Blake Snell. If they no, me neither. Don't have to face him. You don't have to face him. It's not the worst thing in the world. No, absolutely not. So we'll be uh, we'll be fun to see how the lineup looks tonight. Uh, Gibson's a, a is a righty, so we'll see. I mean, does Schilte go back to the Tyler Wade at third base, or does he keep rolling with with the kid Grand Pauly? And we'll see how that that plays out. But. I am also curious. I, Mike Schilt's been very aggressive in terms of rolling out the stars in the same spot. I mean, it has been Bogarts. Tatis, Cronenworth, Manny, Kim, and I think Profar every single game. Has there been one change in the top six of the lineup in, in any game? Well, I did, no, think I think so. I think uh, Sugar started for Profar once, but the he top did. the so top five the has been exactly the same for all six games of the season. How long do you keep doing that before someone gets a day off? At some point. I'm not saying they're tired at this point in the no, year, but you're also because who do you want to sit? You're what, also you get a 162 game schedule. At it. some point, you got to work in an off day for someone somewhere, just because you don't want to give everyone an off day the same day. So when is it time to break up that top five? Because they're all they've all been hitting pretty well. well I mean, Bogarts I, is off to a good start in the leadoff spot. Tatis has gotten you know has gotten hot. A couple of home runs, obviously on Saturday, hitting the ball hard. Jake is red hot. Manny, you know, average wise isn't quite there, but he has, you know, a couple of home runs and is driving in runs. And Kim just hit a home run and is starting to heat up as well. You don't really want to take anyone out of the lineup, but you can't just say, all right, you're all in for 162, I think, top five. But when do we see a change at all to the top of Mike Schultz lineup? That's tough, too, because, you know, we talked about this bench a few weeks ago, and the bench is not your favorite part of the San Diego Padres, I don't think, you know? So um, it, it, the guys that you can spell 
or guys you may not want in there anyway right now. You know what I mean? Like you said, with three third basemen essentially on the roster, you could you could you could play Tyler Wade somewhere else, right? But is that is that doing a lot for you? I did like yesterday in in the blowout, Schilt pulling some guys early, early, yeah, early, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they also know. got pulled the other way in the blowout yep. on. Saturday night, when yep. they were down 9-1, to one, a couple of guys skipped the last couple of innings. Which is uh, fine by me. So you know, He's I managing mean, that fairly well. So if you're going to get guys off their feet, it doesn't have to be at the start of the game. And, you know, just because you don't start, like Max Muncy didn't start last night for the Dodgers, ended up getting two at-bats yep. and having the key go-ahead home run late in the game. You still always have to kind of be ready to come in when you're a position player. This isn't Gabe Kapler's team where, hey, if you're off – might as well just you go know, home. You know, you don't take need a spa to be day. We don't need to see the ball. Spa park. day, by the way. <laughs> take your time. Go get a massage. Watch a movie. You know, we'll see you at the ballpark tomorrow. Uh uh-uh. uh. I think you'd like playing for Gabe. I Catholic. think I would. <laughs> if I'm off. I want to be off. But he gives you a day off. You take it. You don't have to sit there waiting for a pinch hitting appearance. I mean, that would be stressful. If I had to sit in the dugout all game wondering what 100-mile-per-hour thrower I'm going to end up having to go in against, terrible. how is that a day off? That's just more stress. I'd rather just it's be torture. in the game yeah. all the whole time. It's torture. It's absolutely torture. <laughs> than just sitting there waiting. All right. Someone with a nasty slider who throws 98 is who I'm going to have to go up against later today. Thanks a lot for the day off, yeah, Skipper. Really, really appreciate fun. that. Yep, for sure. Uh, looking at some usage uh, in the bullpen, Avila's probably pretty worn down. He's thrown 55 pitches in the last couple of days. Kolak has actually thrown 41 pitches in the last couple of days. That Nothing was all yesterday. in that one bad Friday, inning, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> Cosgrove, 31 pitches on Saturday. He'll be ready to go today because uh, he didn't throw on Sunday. Brito will be ready to go today, I would imagine, uh, after 24 pitches on Saturday. So De Los Santos, Suarez, yeah. all should be good to go. Yep. And, and Matsui, even though he pitched yesterday, he's been so efficient. He he's keeps been great. coming back. You feel like you can use him a lot. I mean, he's a new favorite of pitching ninja with that splitter. When he throws it right, that thing just disappears. It looks like it's going, like, thigh high, and all of a sudden it's bouncing in front of the plate. It is... One of the bugs bunniest of pitches right now in Major League Baseball. And uh, he looks like a tremendous find so far from A.J. Preller in, in that offseason signing. And, and I know the Cardinals went up against, who'd they go up against? Glass now, Bobby Miller, just a couple of electric power arms. They went up against Gavin Stone. Who am I missing? They went up against, oh, and Yamamoto. I mean, they faced... They faced three really well, Matt nasty. Matt Walter will be quite the change of pace <laughs> he with will. that knuckleball for them today. It, well, exactly. I'm sure it's the last guy they want to see, too. Probably, after, yeah. after struggling, yeah. you know, if the guy's going to throw his knuckleball, it's not the greatest recipe for getting on track. But offensively, man, they do not look good. You want to keep them down. You want to keep Arenado guy isn't even batting 100 yet. He murders this team. Keep him quiet. He looks all sorts of confused up at the plate right now. Um, So you want to make sure you keep that going. You know they're going to play probably pretty good defense against you. So um, they've got got some young players that are really exciting uh, to watch. Jordan Walker, Mason Wynn. Uh, really, really fun players. The kid, Victor Scott, they were talking to his parents on the game last night. Uh, He's fast as lightning. So there's, you just want to keep these guys down and out a little bit. And remember, uh, this is a team that some people you know, expect to be a, a potential playoff contender at the end of the season. I didn't pick them, but I, I know some experts thought that they could contend for a division title or even a wild card. So you can never think too early about... You know, tiebreakers and, you know, you want to win these games against a potentially a team that you're matching up against later in the season, trying to to sneak into the postseason. So every game is important. That's uh, the biggest lesson we took from last year, that there are no unimportant games in the baseball season. Otherwise, you end up wondering what happened to those two games that would have gotten into the playoffs at the end of the year and looking back and regretting so many other performances. Yeah. And I don't think there's any games Padres regret so far this season. I mean, the ball going through Jake's glove obviously was unfortunate, but I don't think you've played one where you go, man, we just gave one away in this game. They've had bad pitching, you know, bad pitching performance, bad inning from Cosgrove on Saturday, but there's no game where you felt like, yeah, we were dominating. We yeah, let that one true. get away that we should have won. Well, which makes you a little nervous because you get that feast or famine feeling again. True. That's not the feeling that you want if you're a Padres fan necessarily. Uh, tonight will be a, a, an interesting an interesting watch. It always is. But the feast or famine thing from last year is just what killed us. I mean, it just killed us. 
like personally, <laughs> the fan base, and and it had to have killed the players too. So hopefully uh, they keep that in mind. Come out tonight and just go after Kyle Gibson and know that that you know the lineup. You're better than him. You know you're better than him. You can handle him. So um, that's going to be something to watch tonight. Would love to see some runs early. And uh, yeah, like you said, get into their bullpen ASAP because they are they're beat right now. And the uh, drone show after the game, so you can stay in your seats and enjoy a, a different form of entertainment. I'd imagine if you are one of those noise complaining downtown residents, you prefer a drone show over a fireworks. Do you? It's just a bunch of. I don't know if you can hear them or not. If they're high enough in the air that you hear the buzzing noise, maybe. And I've never been to a drone show, I so it's definitely a, a different experience. <laughs> and then uh, I've tomorrow... never actually been to a uh, anything after a game. And then tomorrow's the day, so game. we may be, we may be tossing some baseballs downstairs. Oh, yeah, after the show here, today. we absolutely a little, are. Little warm up for our first pitch tomorrow. So uh, we'll get to that. I see Annie and Elston are here. They are coming up next uh, for four more hours discussing the weekend that was Padres basketball and more but that is it for us today a uh, good show to start the week thank you to all the tier ones for checking in and supporting as always paul Rindle, our executive producer and imaging director thank you doing a nice job as always woods giving me the april 1st business back there uh for woodsy i'm ben higgins have a great rest of your monday from all of us here at san diego's number one sports station 97.3 to fan so long everybody